It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott's here. Mary Jo Foley's here. And yes, I'm here. I'm back, baby. We'll find out why Paul canceled his Google Stadia membership. We'll also talk about Windows 20 H1. Is it done? And Microsoft Teams, the new leader. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 648, recorded Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. All-you-can-eat breadsticks. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Brave. Brave is the browser reimagined. Switch now to get unmatched speed and privacy and stop trackers from following you. Save battery life and earn rewards by opting into privacy-respecting ads. Brave is free and easy to switch to. Go to brave.com slash twit and switch to Brave today. And by Ring Central. With Ring Central, you'll get everything you need in one place for your business communication needs. With all-in-one cloud, phone, video conferencing, and team messaging, staying connected has never been easier. Save with their holiday bundle offer. Don't pay until 2020 when you go to ringcentral.com slash windows. And by Capterra. Find the right tools to make an informed software decision for your business. Visit Capterra's free website at capterra.com slash windows. <laughs> it's time for Windows Weekly, the show we cover the latest news from Microsoft. Thank you so much to Micah Sargent for filling in for the last 15 months. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Felt like we it. We watched that little boy grow up before our Isn't eyes, Leo. amazing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Paul Therott, he's still here, therott.com. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thought, you, thought you'd be gone while, when I left. Yeah, no. <laughs> Mary, that no, I, it's, I, you know, it's so great to come back home and be with old friends. Mary Jo Foley, <laughs> all about Microsoft.com. Uh, I, I can't pretend that I didn't really enjoy vacation, but at least yeah. I came home to this, so that's not so bad. Uh, wow. Did anything happen while I was gone? Nah. You went to Ignite, well, right? <laughs> yeah, Ignite was a big show. Was it? No, was it a fun? lot of things happened, actually. Yeah, yeah. it was big. Um, Ignite was big. There were a lot of announcements at Ignite. Um, I know um, Micah got his Elvis. His, uh, yeah. I got my Surface Laptop 3. What do you think? Right. Is it is it all you would hope to be? I'm keeping it. <gasps> did you get the 15-inch AMD version or the 13-inch? No, inch? I got yeah. the good one, the Intel 13-inch one. Yeah. Yeah. You oh, don't want to, you know, you don't want a whopping big 15 inch laptop. No, no, no. This, uh, yeah, I, I decided this week I'm keeping it, and good. it's going to be my next laptop. <laughs> Did you get wow. Alcantara? No. Okay. That horrible stuff. No, I got the I got the beautiful sandstone metal one. Oh, that's pretty. There's yeah. um. They're going to actually have a little Mary Jo sticker face on it. Like it's a, <laughs> a good housekeeping seal of approval. Approved. It, it like says instead of an Intel inside, it's going to say Mary Jo outside. <laughs> thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Yep. Two oh, laps up. That's great news. Yep. I have to say, yeah. I didn't play with Elvis that long, but uh, the first of all, the idea of a blue suede laptop is pretty awesome. Pretty amazing. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, th I am impressed by it. It's thin. It's light. Uh, performant. Great screen. Um, yeah, I can see. Is and you like the keyboard? Life? The keyboard is really good. Good. Yep. That's important, of course, because you type is. for a living and yes. what's the battery life like I'm getting like six hours six and a half hours which you know i think they're claiming nine or ten so that's pretty good based on their usual oh, i patterns. always divide it in half so you're actually getting a yeah, little, little better I than I'd i'm getting more than half yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's good nice i totally did not expect to keep it or like it and so i was really surprised when i started using it that i liked it we have the I Surface mean, not, X, and I thought I was going to hate that, and actually now I'm not convinced I do. It's kind of right. nice. Yeah. It's bigger than I thought. I'm not surprised you like the laptop. I mean, it's I've always thought it was a great machine. No, I, you've liked it all favorites. along. Yeah. 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 I didn't like one, and I wasn't even interested in trying two. Um, right. I was just kind of like, yeah. Nice. Just I like that they laptop. finally got rid of Alcantara as a requirement for the most Me part. Me too. Same. Um, so I don't, the process of choice seems like a goofy thing. I don't quite get that. Uh, well, you mean on the 13? Uh, well, no, on the 15, you if, you, the if you buy the business yeah. version, you can get Intel. But if you buy it directly from Microsoft, you know, as a consumer, you get the A&D version. And they, 
it kind of had a sort of reason for it, but there's no real reason. I, I, don't, I don't quite understand what they're doing there. People, the thing I like is it not just it being lappable, but it's it's better weighted and balanced overall. So yeah. I, I think it was Richard Hay who said you can actually, you know, they always show you can open it with one hand. You can finally yeah, do that. Right, right. Yeah. It's funny how it gets down to little things like that. But when it you, does. When yeah. you do it, you know, over a couple of years, a thousand times, it becomes important. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you'll notice it. When it's not there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you'll go to use some other computer. It's like opening a like one of those clams. <laughs> You're not sure if it's dead or alive. Maybe I shouldn't eat this thing. <laughs> you know? It's like, can I open this? Should I? Yeah, it's like, I mean, I could rip it open, but do I want to do that? <laughs> use an oyster knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. If you have to use the knife, don't eat it. Oh, also, the, my, the bigger and better trackpad, precision trackpad on this mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. Oh, okay. Huge. Right. Yep. People are saying that Microsoft's trackpad drivers are now the ones to use, not the Synaptic. Oh, drivers. for sure. That yeah. is absolutely true. And everyone is switching to them. Uh, HP pretty much across the board. They've already done it on the business side. They finally did it on Spectre this past month. Uh, you see them on, uh, do you see them on ThinkPads? Yes, you do. I don't want to say that. I'm not yes, sure. I think you, you do. do. I think you do. I think you do, too. I think everybody's switched. So, Mary yeah. Jo, do you regret not trying the Spectre or some other? I mean... The Spectre is almost the same thin and light. Form. Yeah, uh, I've been using I've been using a Spectre that Paul loaned me most of this year, and I liked it okay. No, a, but a, I did that's an elite, love it. elite book. Oh, the, elite sorry, book. the elite book. Um, yeah. I still would like to try the HP Dragonfly that's coming out. The really, really thin, yeah, and light one. Um, but I'm thinking it's probably it, it's probably going to have a lot of features. I don't care if I have them or not, like the privacy screen and things like that. I just, you know, the laptop you were using, I just last night or yesterday, I guess, reset the 14-inch version, which I'd used mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. exclusively like the first half of the year. And once again, I, I was really struck by the awesomeness of that keyboard. Uh, mm -hmm. It's got a precision trackpad, which is huge, which Spectre didn't have until just now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the screen is, you know, it's 16 by 9, whatever. It's it's beautiful. Yeah. It's a great screen. Great, you know, great specs. It's just a... Like I could, I could have Solid. seen you sticking with that as well. But I, the Surface laptop yeah. is a great choice. The only thing maybe the Spectre might beat it on is battery life. They're they're claiming amazing battery yeah. life. The one yeah. I have was about the same as okay. what I'm getting, or That's a little the problem. less. Problem. You see these specs, and you just don't know what to. Believe. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm gonna go look and see what I got on that. Did you have the the Spectre? The new Spectre? No, I'm going to get the new one when it comes when it's available. Yeah, I, I was. I got it. a notification uh, while I was on the trip that it was available. I was really. Oh, okay. I got screwed. I just want to say this because I had read that Apple wasn't going to come out with its 2016 laptop till next year. You remember this? And I said, mm -hmm. "Well, I need a new laptop." I gave my ThinkPad Extreme to our bookkeeper, right. and <laughs> oh, okay, I guess. And I bought something, and I'm really regret it now. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know, I was looking at the Spectre. I was looking at the Surface Laptop Three, and I ended up buying a silly System Seventy Six Linux laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll send it. You back should put Windows on that thing, Leo. It'd be good. Yeah, you never, I never thought of that. <laughs> it probably works great, right? <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? It would. Because <laughs> System Seventy Six makes laptops for Linux. They're, they they right. so. Um, That's why it was funny. But once but. the MacBook came out, in fact, I was in Dubai when the MacBook came out, and I was jumping up and down. I said, "What? They yeah. shipped it." Oh, so man. I did order that. Now I have too many laptops. Don't <laughs> ask me. People are going. I'm going to get emails now. Well, you how many? Uh, how many laptops? No, do you, you don't even want to know. <laughs> I, I now keep. Um, I, mean, I have a notebook program I use called Joplin, and I now keep a running. Uh, like a tally. Of, uh, yeah, of la of. <laughs> Computers like, in la, service. Like notebooks of shame. Computers in service versus computers out of service. It's kind of I embarrassing. See. I'd show you, but it's actually kind of embarrassing. But <laughs> some of them are for work. Like we have a sur uh, that, uh, well, it's not Surface, but the laptop, the uh, desktop in the studio there. I have the mm -hmm. Lenovo here. I mean, they're for work. Mm -hmm. Sure they are. From work. Yeah, I have I a breakfast I computer. I have to have a breakfast Sometimes I build a little Ford in, out of them and I crawl in there and I just rock back and forth. And it's for work. The money I spent. Um, anyway, I'm happy with the new MacBook, but uh, you probably don't want to hear that. So, you know what I want to do, if we can, is take a break real quick and uh, do an ad because it's for something Paul likes for a Ooh. change. 
And then, <laughs> and then, you know, I want to sweeten him up a little bit before we uh, get into the meat of the show, including, this is hard to believe, we just got 1909, and now it looks like there's another edition of Windows in, and it's of ready to manufacture. Mm. Our show today, though, brought to you by, you recommended it, Paul, I think last week, Brave. Wow. Yeah. Yep. I, you know, it's funny because I've been using Brave for six months. I, it, so the idea of Brave is they took the they took Chromium, which is the open, just like Microsoft did with Edge. They took the open source version of Chrome and took out, de-Googled it, <laughs> mm -hmm. and left in stuff that Google is now taking out, like the ability to use an ad blocker. It has ad blocking. It has anti-traction protection. It has a lot of the features you really want. In a browser, without any of the, the spyware from Google, in fact, uh, I use it with Start Page instead of Google for search, and it's just awesome. Brave mm -hmm. is a next-generation web browser built by a team that's focused, unlike maybe Google, on privacy. <laughs> and, uh, and as a result, you know, this is the nice side benefit of taking out all that stuff, performance. They're making a, a better internet with privacy by default, and you've got control over everything, including who has access to what you're doing online. Um, you get unmatched speed, security, and privacy. They've got shields that block data-grabbing ads and trackers. You know those Facebook like buttons? No, I don't have to worry about those. It's just they're blocked. It's super fast, and as a result, you know, when you don't download all that crapware... You get speed. It's six times faster than competitors. It also gives you better battery life and lowers your data costs, right? Because you're not downloading as much. Brave works everywhere you do. Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, Android, and iOS. Uh, I love Brave Sync because that means I can synchronize all of those devices. So all the plugins I want are synchronized. All my bookmarks, every all my settings, everything, the same across the board. It stops trackers. It drops creepy ads. It gives you speed. It gives you online privacy. It gives you a better user experience. Wouldn't you pay for that? Well, guess what? Brave is free. The other thing I really like, by the way, it makes it very easy to switch uh, browsers. Of course it does. You know, you open Brave, it'll say, okay, you want me to take your bookmarks from the other browser and set up and all that. Uh, it's just like Chrome, looks just like Chrome. It has the speed of Chrome, has all the benefits of Chrome without being tracked. Uh, the other thing I, by the way, 56 languages. The other thing I really like about Brave, because it's blocking ads, I always have this concern, you know, we do ads, I'm doing an ad right now, that you're demonetizing some of your favorite sites on the web. You want, you know, when you go to therot.com or Mary Jo's site, allaboutmicrosoft.com, there's ads there. If you're going to block ads, you're, you're taking food out of their mouth. So what Brave does, which I think is brilliant, is it, it, it lets you pay advertisers with Brave attention tokens or BAT. And if you opt into Brave ads, you get BAT for free. So you get Brave's quality, non-intrusive, non-tracking ads. You don't have to turn this on, by the way. But if you want to, they will give you BAT tokens, which you can then award content creators you know, it, it, automatically or manually so that they basically fix this whole issue of ad blocking versus keeping your favorite sites going. It's really good. Improve privacy, give publishers their fair share of web revenue. It really is all about fixing the Internet. It was created by Brendan Eich and uh, Brian Bondi. Brendan was the co-founder of Mozilla, created JavaScript, so they know what they're doing. You get, oh, another nice feature, private windows. And the private browsing is really private for one thing. And it allows you to turn on Tor with it. So it's got a, it's a Tor browser built in. Listeners uh, to Windows Weekly can download Brave right now. And in fact, it would you could get it, of course, at Brave.com. But if you would go, if you do me a, a solid and go to Brave.com slash twit, just, you're not getting anything different, but just to let them know you heard it here, that would be awesome. You know, we often try to give you a benefit, but if something's free, there's no discount. It's free. Brave.com slash twit. Switch to Brave. I did... It's on every one of my street machines. It's the easiest way to browse. I love Brave Sync. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, all about big tech. Today, it's about us. Brave.com slash twin. And Paul, you, you recommended it last week as one of your picks. Yeah. I, uh, you know, it's, it, I, we were at Ignite and everyone was getting excited over the new icon for Edge. 
and the Braves <laughs> reached out to me and they said, hey, if you want an early peek at this, we're going to, you know, ship it next week, whatever. And I'm like, Brave yeah, sure. One. Brave 1.0. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, like you said, I mean, there's an amazing upside to getting rid of things that other browsers load in, in its privacy and performance. You know, it's a big right. deal. And I thought that, I, you know, it's it's pretty amazing. I, apparently, they do a better job of blo uh, blocking trackers than Firefox or even Safari. It's the best as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. The other thing I like, and we're all, we're PWA fans. This is not, right. not to give Yeah, Brave. that all works. Yeah, I'm, I'm, look, I'm on Google Photos and right there in the menu on Brave, install yep. Google Photos. Yeah, so if you're doing that stuff with Chrome or the new Edge, that all works exactly the same in love Windows that. 10 or in the I Mac uh, with Brave. Yeah, yeah I just love mm -hmm. that. It's really nice. All right. Uh, <clears throat> did you? I presume you guys talked <laughs> extensively about 1909. We did. So, yeah. <laughs> and I've got a my tip today regards 1909 setup, which we'll get to that in a bit. But yeah. So the the, the narrative here, because this is a story that we've kind of covered almost every week. <laughs> recently mm -hmm. but it keeps coming up because every week we get one or two builds of windows 10 20 h1 and every time there are no new features or maybe one little minor thing you know mm -hmm. and I, I mean we started testing this thing last march maybe february february yeah yeah uh and so of course the natural assumption was well my god i mean they wouldn't test something like this so far in mm -hmm. advance if there wasn't something big coming down the pike and uh, there has been nothing big coming down the pipe, <laughs> like ever. And so, you know, once again, we have to ask semi-rhetorically, is this really it? I mean, is this all this is? Is that all there is, my friends? <laughs> is that the there that's there? Then let's keep dancing. And how do we feel about that? I know. It's kind of surprising, right? Although I, w I went back and looked at what they said when Skip Ahead started testing 20H1 and a lot of us say now that they said the reason they did it was because there was some big secret feature that we couldn't no, no, know they, about. That isn't what it was, that. right? Yeah. Do, no. you, do you actually know what they said? Because they did yeah, say they, a reason. They did. They said, um, I think they said something about servicing or they implied it was about servicing, like how we service the builds. This is something we need to test. I didn't get okay. that out of it. I, it I, yeah. Okay. Some sort like a plumbing like feature that just required an extra amount of yeah. testing. Yeah. Some, yeah. But then, then we, I guess we still did think though that because 1909 is such a small update that, of course, 20H1 would be big um, or bigger, yes. right? We of kind of assume right. that. Yep. But that hasn't happened. I, I was looking back at things I've written about what is new in 20H1, and there I are know. some things. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, nothing you'd be like, there's, <laughs> there's this, nothing, okay. yeah. which by the way, maybe the I, biggest I, thing, I, I was going to say, maybe yeah. the biggest thing is Windows subsystem for Linux 2. Yes. Wait, which won't right. impact most normal people. No, no. Right. I assume <laughs> by the time this thing ships, uh, the new edge will come with it. It's possible. I don't know where the new terminal is in its uh, development, but it, it may be, it could get in there at some point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and WSL too, like you said, it will certainly yeah. be part of it. Yeah. Or three, is it two or three? Three? Two. 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 And all this um, stuff is in home as well as pre pro or? Uh, is WSL I in home? I I'm remember. not sure if it is. Mm. Okay. Maybe. I can't remember. Do you guys yeah. only use pro? No. I use home. No. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, because you don't care about WSL, course. of course. I don't what am care I about WSL. That's the Windows right. subsystem for Linux. Nobody. <laughs> right. I need right. to look that I, up. I mean, That's a good question. Yeah. It used know, to be pro is... only, but I for some reason I thought it. I might. know. I think they changed it. I, I do they think did. they changed. Because yeah. isn't the new terminal yeah. now in Home as well? Well, it's a third. That's a store app, so you, anyone could get that. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you can download that. Well, okay. And get it. But otherwise, the stuff that's in there is like I'm looking at a list. Xbox Game Bar updates. You know, um, well, actually, that is pretty huge. Okay, really, <laughs> sure. Anyway, no, it's, it's actually, um, that's a <laughs> you know, operating Windows Hello Pin in safe mode. I know that these are okay. They're they're good updates, and of course, more Kimoji. You know, we care. Yeah, we all need more Kimoji in our lives. In our lives. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, I'm sorry, but I've been gone for a month. What is Kimojis? You know those little characters that are like you combine a bunch of things and there's somebody shrugging. You mean like emojis? <laughs> they're like, oh, they're, they're key. They're they're ASCII emojis. 
Yeah, they're like how a bunch are those of characters. Built in? You know the what, the what? Yeah. 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 But it's all ASCII. Yeah. How do they? How is yeah. that built in? So they have a, a Kimoji picker AI, Leo. in there. <laughs> AI. AI is always the answer to how anything a Kimoji gets in a picker. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. It's part of the emoji. It used to be pick. only the cool kids could do it. Right. And yeah. now everybody can do a yeah. whatever. Sure. Yeah. That's what Windows but does. It exposes all, functionality to everybody. Yeah. It's just all like kind of like, yeah, that's nice. By the way, nothing I, you're like, to be clear, I want it that's this. fine. Right. No one's <laughs> know, looking for right. the next. 3D right. paint, uh, you know, mixed yes. reality nonsense. No one wants that. Right. No. Um, this is all well and good. This it's just that yeah. the way this was presented, it just seemed like obviously this is going to be humongous. There will be yeah. a new user interface. There will be, you know, finally the culmination of this fluid, not fluid, uh, the fluent framework or whatever that's called, the fluent uh, design language. But it just it just seems like it's another iterative step, and and again that's fine. I mean, I this last release went so great. I'd love yeah. to go through that again a couple of times next year. You know, that's why I'm getting a little whiplashed because yeah yeah oh yeah the <laughs> I, treadmill effect. I feel like we just got 1909 sort of not yeah. everybody uh, but many actually Leo I think a lot I think we're gonna find sometime in the next 30 days that almost everybody did get it. Oh, I really? think this okay. went out really broadly. Okay. Hmm. Which may also. You know, be I don't a have it yet. Yeah. Really? Oh, that's interesting. I, well, I'm I've not a seeker, right? Not a oh, seeker. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. well, fair not, enough. Fair. No, not everybody's a seeker, so you can't. I mean, no. you're normal. If there's anyone listening right. to this damn show that isn't a seeker, I you, you get, <laughs> turn it off right now. Right now. Stop it. <laughs> no. You same don't. people. No. Do not you, check for you updates. Can't so handle the really update. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, by the way, that's how you become a seeker. Just in case you know you want to want to become one, is you just right. all you have to do is mm -hmm. say, "Is there an update?" And yeah. even by the way, even then you don't get it. it. It just presents it, and then you can choose to get it. So it doesn't hurt to check. Yeah. Can you choose not to if you do that? Yeah, you get to ignore it. Oh. It's a it's an optional update. Oh, that's nice. For now, you know, until yeah. some time in the future. And I have heard problems with it, so that's why I don't know if people should rush to you, do it. You have heard problems. With Haven't it. Really? you? No. No. Mm -mm. There was one thing that they've already fixed, I believe. I'm forgetting what this was, a driver issue, right? Okay, so yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty reliable. Well, you got to remember, this thing is being delivered as a cumulative update. It's not a feature update, which is a version upgrade. It's literally just another one of those monthly oh. updates they do all the time. Yeah. Oh. And by all the time, if I you're, mean more If you're already on 1909, uh, 1903, it is. That's right. Really? That's right. So if yes. you're not on 1903, right. then 1909 is just like uh, a little... Monthly yeah, you wouldn't even. Flip. You almost wouldn't notice it, other than the fact oh. that you do have to yeah. say, "Yeah, okay, I do want this." Yeah, oh, that's interesting. It reboots. The whole thing takes about five minutes. It's one of the quickest, cleanest, easiest things in the world. Okay, yeah. so this was a good update then. It was yeah. so far. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. The, by the, the way, issue though, I mean, was because here's the issue the that same. we saw: uh, unable to discover or connect Bluetooth devices using some real tech adapters. Oh. It's already resolved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought there was, I, I, you know, this is the problem. If five people tweet, oh, I can't reboot I now, my system's disappeared, right. then you think, yeah. oh, there's a problem. Right, everyone's <laughs> having a meltdown. Right. I mean, don't plug in a Kindle. That will be a nightmare. But other than that. <laughs> How, and they fixed the SSD issue, right? So you don't have to unplug all your removable drives before you install yeah. it and all that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have any problems, but I don't use weird yeah. I mean, I'm using mostly yeah. Microsoft hardware, so. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I haven't really heard, talked to anybody who said, by the way, this doesn't work. I And Paul and I both often hear right away. Oh, from you'll, hear. I, you'll hear. I feel Flip like we're the canaries in the coal mine for that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, you'll hear. Um, yeah, so far. In the, in the so tip far, part so of the show, at the back of the book, I'm going to discuss the install part of this because actually there are some major changes in the setup routine, which is kind of mm -hmm. interesting. And this will typically only impact you when you buy a new computer that has 1909 on it or if you reset your computer after having installed 1909. So we'll get to that. But as far as like the daily use stuff, I mean, there's two or three maybe minor UI changes that almost no one would even notice. And that's about it. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so moving on, <laughs> now we're ready <laughs> for uh, this. Now, they're not going to call it 2003 because that would confuse the hell out of everybody. Well, actually, we you know, we don't know. I'm guessing, right? yes, I, they are going to. You think so? 
I hope mm-hmm. they do. Just for all the complaining, it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> yep. You Windows know? 10 2003. Yeah. Well, we, you know, the last one was Windows Server 2003. I mean, we, it's not the same thing. Our brains no, can't it, handle this, really. They they want people to call it 2003, I guess, like 1909. 20, right? Or as uh, Sachin Zell would always say, 2003. 2009. That sounds like a Prince song. It does. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, on this day in 1985, Windows... 1.0 was really oh boy oh wow really so here we are yeah and everyone everyone used and loved that thing huh <laughs> <laughs> 35 wow. years ago 1985 wow 34 years ago yeah wow 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 neat you know the reason it shipped like tiled only is that some guy took over the project at the last minute and he was like, "I'm not doing Windows. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Man. <laughs> like, I just can't. Just can't do it. We're shipping can't. it like this. This is it, man." This and then he became get. convinced that was the right way to do it. He's like, "No, we what we manage the Windows for users. It's smart." No, Who was good. that? Do you know? I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head. It must be in whatever article I wrote a few yeah. months back. I don't remember. Oh yeah, fun. That's right. Don't forget <laughs> if you're a premium member of Thrott.com, you get this. Really great history that uh, Paul's been doing um, on programming, Windows programming. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, nine. Uh, I'm sorry, tw- but we're going to keep calling it 20H1 just because that's the current nomenclature. That's the current name. Yeah. I. I by the way, I. They refer to th- the problem with Windows 10. <laughs> the problem. That's funny, Paul. A problem <laughs> with Windows 10 <laughs> is that. They have so many different names for things, right? So Microsoft yeah. as an entity, Microsoft's employees, whatever, in official blog posts and support documents will literally refer to different versions of Windows 10 by multiple names. So you could, you will see the following names. You will see Windows 10, comma, version 1909, uh, Windows 10, November 2019 update. You'll even see them refer to it as Windows 10, comma, version and then the build number and i i i kind of wish that they would pick one and just kind of go with it you know Mm, um i feel very strongly that the update name is the name of the thing you install to get to the version of windows 10 um and so a version like 1909 to me is the version that's it it's version 1909 and so because the version version numbers by definition are numbers we can't really technically use 20 h1 as the version I mean, they right. could because they call it everything. They call it anything they want. But right, they call it the the May update, the, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I don't like if that it comes kind of out thing. But yeah, spring, consistency yeah. is is huge for me, and they're not doing it. But I, I to me, Windows 10, comma version 20 or whatever they want, 2003, 2004, 20, whatever is fine. Or, yeah. But I don't know what they're going to do. I know. I we know. also don't know so, when we because it's almost done now. Um, yeah. We think this could technically RTM any time, like what? maybe before the end of the, this year, right? And so I keep hearing they're still going to hold off and actually release it to mainstream in the spring at some time, maybe maybe actually in March instead of May. Right. Uh, but it's almost done. Like they are they're in the home stretch for this right now. So what what do you think they had to? I mean, what did they have to test for so long? What was it? Do you think it was just the My- servicing stuff? I think it was servicing stuff. I also think they're doing a lot more with the core, right? Windows Core yeah. OS. Um, and they're working to see yeah. how that's going to work in terms of replacing things with Windows Core OS that were before an, an integrated part of the operating system. So maybe that played in also. Um, yeah. And what will lead to Windows 10 X? X, right. As another derivative Variant. of the operating system, yep. maybe the, the exactly. fundamental work there or whatever. Yep. Hmm. Okay. I know. Oh, by the way, so um, while we're talking here on Twitter, uh, Filippo Dino, Dino Dinolfo, sorry, I'm butchering your name here, who um, is a member of the Twit community, he had a posting on the community site about what happened to him with 1909. He says it borked his PC twice yeah, yeah. and he got the message, no operating no. system found. Yeah, I saw that. I guess that's where I was getting the idea. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it, I guess some people, everybody else on the thread is kind of like, nah, I didn't have any problems, but he definitely had problems. And his <laughs> funny comment here is 
Yeah, so it this happened, but all my files were right where I left them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there on the SSD. Oh, yeah. boy. So, I don't know. Uh, I haven't heard other people complaining about this, but obviously you can't say nobody is having problems. Right. Well, yeah, Mary Jo, I want to be really case. clear about this. Nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody. is having problems. Well, this guy is a real guy. <laughs> no, he's not. Is he? He's not an egg on know? Twitter. Uh, nah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. He's a I'm Russian sorry. operative. We know. We all know that. Nah. No, but it, he you looks know, when real. There, were, <laughs> there were those releases of Windows 10 that had serious reliability problems. I know. No, I, mean, I, know. We heard I know. And mass. I mean, it was it's out true. of control. It's true. And this time it's been pretty quiet. I've, I've gotten a ton of people who just said, hey, just, you know, to throw this yep. into your data point, I... I installed yep. it. No problems. It was quick. Yep. It Same. doesn't seem to have any issues, you know. Yep. It's a big change. That's good. Yeah, it is. And Leo, we did say on the last show, we don't know if this is the new normal. Like if if um, 20H2 will be a cumulative update type release again. There are some people who say no. There's some people who say maybe. We, of course, would like to see that happen, and so would many, many IT pros, but very, we don't know. Um, we, we do not know if that's the I new I would way love for this to be the, you know, the new normal. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. So, yeah, once this is done, uh, 20H1 is the one that's codenamed Vibranium. What? Then we're on to manganese. <laughs> sounds like a Marvel yeah, comic that's, universe. That's it is. The shield material for Captain America, right? <laughs> oh, Lord. Why is uh, Marvel then, leaking then manganese, into everything? Manganese. Yeah, manganese is that's the next element. Yeah. It is a real metal. And that's the, the second half uh, release name, yeah. as far as yeah. we know. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's kind of boring right now, but in a way, it's what we asked for all along, which was yep. make yeah. Yeah, so we can't complain. That, you know, boring. after years, <laughs> after years of complaining about too many new features, it's like, why aren't there any new features? <laughs> I know. Um, right? No, I don't. Yep. I don't need new features. I, in fact, in some ways, I need fewer features. I'd like to just get up and running quickly and install yep. the handful of apps I need and get on with life. I don't need yep. bouncing 3D objects and right. whatever. I mean, the nonsense. thing that will be different. The thing that will look different and be different is is the thing called Windows 10 X, right? Which yes. is yep. uh, Windows Lite or Santorini, yeah, whatever you, know you what? want to call it. The, the, the thing they're doing smart there or right there or however you want to say it is they're not changing the UI for everyone, right? They're going to actually do what is essentially kind of a, almost like a public test with some subs, a very small subset of people. And we'll yeah. see how it goes because I think there is a compelling case to be made that the Windows UI is still too complex. You know, it's mm -hmm. too many moving parts, too many things, too many places to look for stuff. And we'll mm -hmm. see. You know, some people may like it, some people won't. I think in the future, at the very least, this will be an optional thing. But we have all these examples in the past. Um, Microsoft changing the start menu or changing the start menu to a screen and not offering people the way to go back. And I think mm -hmm. they understand that that's a mistake. And so if this Windows 10X UI, whatever they're calling it, becomes at least an option on mainstream versions of Windows 10. That would be fine because, you know, hopefully at that point you'll be able to choose. You know, power users might like the old desktop. Um, mainstream users might prefer the simpler thing. Yeah. But to be clear, the UI that we've seen for 10X, which looks a lot like Chrome, um, mm -hmm. that is never coming to existing PCs. This is going to be for new devices going forward. Well, I, right. It, but what I'm saying is it, it right. could in the, in the future. I mean, we'll see. Like, Right. Well, we'll see. I mean, for now. Yeah, we'll see. I don't think it it's can. fine. Well, how come? Because it's going to be based on Windows Core OS, and Windows Core OS, I don't believe, will ever be backported to existing devices. Well, no, I just mean the UI itself. I mean, the UI oh, the layer UI? is oh, um, yeah. it's just a oh, yeah. UI. Just the UI, like the look and feel, you mean? Yeah, I don't mean the system itself. I mean the, yeah, just yeah. the, the OS itself, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wonder. I've never, I've never heard anybody say that they're thinking about bringing that to existing devices, that it's kind of like a go forward thing. Like it'll start yeah. out with the dual screen um, laptops mm -hmm. and, and um, tablets, but maybe. Um, I think this thing is ripe uh, for a makeover. I'd love to see yeah. them do something, but you know, again, but yeah. without blowing away the opportunity to go back. Right. It Especially might be too, for enterprise, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. businesses they they see this thing and they're like, yeah, it looks cleaner and nicer, but like I'm really used to 
what well, it unless is we don't want to, you know, train retrain, all of our employees to right. use some new UI, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Yeah. This has to be a challenge because if you, you want to move forward, you're going to, I mean, I'm not in favor of UI change for change's sake. Right. Yeah. But it's, I mean, I don't think we've perfected everything. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is a challenge because anytime you want to change something, even if it's for the better, people are going, mm -hmm. I don't like it. Oh, you're killing someone's muscle memory. Yeah. Exactly. Every time. Yep. So what do yep. you do? Maybe you offer a switch with the new UI and the old UI, or is that too complicated? I don't think it's too complicated. You know, I, some, I've seen that happen in some apps. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just installed an app on the Mac called Better Touch Tool, and they had completely changed the control panel. But they have a button that says "Old Control Panel." Same settings, right. same yeah. information, but mm -hmm. if you're just confused, a different presentation, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the yeah. the Windows UI itself. I mean, if you're a developer, I mean, there's a scalable nature to it. You can mm -hmm. uh, an application yeah. can look and feel like the underlying OS, it's just et cetera. So, I mean, I'm not, yeah. not, by, right. not the browser Chrome, but yeah. UI yeah. element Chrome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, know. there's only so much time in the day, and the guy who writes <laughs> Windows is busy. He's got other things. On his <laughs> yeah, right. He's working really right. hard. <laughs> they still haven't put the simplified ribbon in anything, right? How long ago did they talk about oh, that? I know. And didn't it? Didn't they also test different? versions of that like it looked one way in some oh, right. places yeah. and some people saw a different look of it if you today go to word online you will see yep. the simplified ribbon for that application yep. it's the only yep. place you can see it if you're running word on the desktop whatever uh, mac yep. uh, pc it doesn't matter you could go into the fast ring you could whatever mm -hmm. you're not going to see it it's just not there and I, one note, I don't understand one note online it's there too right yeah, I'm just talking, I'm just word specifically. OneNote oh, yeah. for okay. Windows 10 actually has what is essentially a simplified ribbon. Okay. Yeah, I know. They they were supposed to do that. And yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Well, I, I got to say about Office, a lot of things we heard were going to happen to Office and with Office have changed, right? Remember, mm -hmm. they were going to rebuild all the apps as UWP apps at one point right. for Office. And then they actually and tried doing it. that plan's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the time, uh, was gone. it Mozilla? Or, uh, Mozilla was going to redo everything in Java. <laughs> Yeah. And then they were like, oh, God. <laughs> it's just like, wait a minute. No. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Even look at what happened with OneNote. Leo didn't probably didn't hear about this. No, but after happened? we told everybody it, the OneNote desktop app was going away, the full app, yeah. at, at Ignite, they said, you know what? Just kidding. We're going to actually <laughs> keep that yeah. going. And yeah, we're going to add features to that it and, and keep it around. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It even got dark mode. Thank God. I know. It's All what? you people <laughs> live with a They literally on. released an entire new version of Office without a new version of OneNote since they said they weren't going to ever update that client yep. again. And yep. now they're like, yeah, we're going to bring it back. That would. I mean, we use OneNote <laughs> like for the show. I would have scared yeah. me if they'd uh, to hear. I am right well, now looking at eight years worth of notes. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? I mean, we use we can we mostly use the UWP or the um, online version, right? right? Oh, the interesting. Web app. Okay. You don't, you're not using yeah. the. Well, yeah, but you know, I, I I went to the UWP app, the one that's built into Windows 10, kind of kicking and screaming because, mm -hmm. especially early on, it was kind of unsophisticated uh, compared to the desktop app. And literally, I think it was the week before Ignite. I think it was. That, remember, at some point this past year, they added the ability to change the default paste, right? So you could just say, oh, look, yeah. I just want it to always be plain text, which is what I set it to. But realistically, what I really want is that thing you get in the desktop versions of Office, where when you paste, you get like a little floating toolbar for paste options. Mm -hmm. And you can get, then, after you paste, change it to one of the other options. So maybe you want the source formatting, you want to combine the formatting, whatever the choices are. Mm. They added that to the uh, Windows 10 version of OneNote, just literally, I think it was the week before Ignite. I was like, wow, oh, there it is. That's the last <laughs> thing that was missing that I actually use every day <laughs> yeah. that I really needed. And they added it. And I was like, nice, this is things finally getting sophisticated. Like, yeah, we're killing it. <laughs> you know, over, they didn't say we're killing it, but you know they're going to kill it. I mean, they're not going to maintain two versions of OneNote. So they'll keep they'll keep updating the web P UWP version of it. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> web, I think I think there'll be the web. I think for Office going for it, and this is just me guessing because I've never actually yeah. heard anybody say this. I think all the web versions of the Office apps will go for it, and they'll pick up more and more of the features that are yes. in the yes. um, yes. existing because that's where Office they want to compete is in the cloud. Right. Speaking so one thirty two, right, and then 
online versions. So I just want to I want to throw this in here because I don't think I I don't think either one of us added it to the notes. This just happened today. One one of the things I've been asking for for a long time. This is semi related because there's a Microsoft doesn't have like a UWP Outlook app, but what they do have is Mail, Calendar, and People that are built into Windows 10. And Calendar and People are fine. They're they're fine. They're fine for what they are. Yeah. They work fine. Uh, the Mail app is terrible. It's always been terrible. It's never not going to be terrible. This uh, it is the worst Mail app. I hate it. I, I you can't set like a font size. I, I don't even yeah. it has it miss it's missing like the most basic features. And so one thing I've been kind of openly calling on Microsoft to do for a long time is to make all those web apps. They have the Office web apps, Outlook.com, and make them into PWAs. And mm-hmm. we could use those as the desktop clients. You know, and of course the natural retort to that is, well, yeah, but Outlook.com is just for Microsoft accounts. It's you know for Outlook.com email. You know, what if I have a Gmail account or whatever? One of the nice things about these client-side apps, including on mobile, is that I can configure multiple accounts. I said, well, that, you know, my response to that is, well, that's just arbitrary. Like, they could add that to the web app. Of course they could. Today, mm-hmm. we found out they are adding it. So uh, I don't see it yet in mine, but Microsoft is adding the ability to configure a Gmail account in Outlook.com. Not combining Outlook.com and Gmail. It's literally a separate inbox. It's You're just connecting to Gmail from Outlook.com. It's exactly what I wanted. And it kind of yeah. makes me wonder if this isn't the future of that client, right? Because mm-hmm. that thing has mm-hmm. everything. It does, um, you know, mail, calendar, and contacts, tasks. And actually, it's going to do G Drive, too. So it does online mm-hmm. storage, just like Outlook Mobile, mm-hmm. right? Interesting. Right. So maybe, yeah. there, maybe the web apps, it's been kind of quiet on the web app front, frankly, mm-hmm. you know, for Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe they're finally moving that direction. Yeah, Maybe. Did you Maybe. get a sense at uh, Ignite that PWAs were still a thing? Barely. Well, <laughs> I really feel like yeah, uh, maybe yes. everybody I mean, was. We were. I I was so excited about this, and I, I feel yeah. like we're, we're, the all the momentum is gone. Yeah, I I don't think anything has changed from Microsoft's perspective. It's just that the problem is nothing has changed, right? right. So yeah. there are no major new. Uh, you know, like I think Google Photos went PWA in the past year or something. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, but everyone still talks about the same couple of apps. It's like Twitter, mm-hmm. Starbucks, you know. Um, Google, I think, is in a better place with that kind of stuff. I don't think that Gmail, for example, is technically a PWA, but it supports offline features and so forth. None of Microsoft's web apps do. None of them. And to me, for Microsoft to be considered to be serious about PWA, they need to stop talking about it and actually make all of the office online apps, yeah, including all yeah. the com, PWAs, and available offline. I'm starting to despair, to be honest with you. I know. Yeah, it's, at, it's at Ignite, awesome they were like because, two PWA sessions, yeah. right? And they they weren't like any big breaking news things. They were just kind of like, yeah, we're still doing it. And we're yet, still thinking about it. It solves <laughs> a lot of these issues. I know. Yeah. Like, it's it's really bizarre to me that this is. It solves more than these issues, right? Because mm-hmm. not only do you get an app that it is an app that works on the Mac and works on Linux, it works on Windows, it works on Android and iOS. Like this is, this solves real problems for the mm-hmm. the, the developers who have to make these apps, right? You don't have to maintain twenty different code bases. You could literally have an app that just runs everywhere. Yeah. Well, and and I if, think if if you uh, if you make a vape app. <laughs> and and Apple just pulled them all off of the App Store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The simple solution is well, I'll just make a PWA version of it. Mm. Yeah, the better solution is not to make a vape app. But, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> if you're in the sure. business of vape, you know, yeah, e-cigs, yeah. I guess you know, making that. Yeah, it's like working for uh, working for like um, I can't even remember the name of the company anymore. Like the uh, one of the tobacco companies yeah. in the 1980s. You have to kind of see the sunset yeah. happening yeah. there. Like, you know, it's kind of a hint. Yeah, uh, is uh, now developers don't seem to be embracing it, and that's I would say that's what's hurting it, right? But why aren't they? Is it too hard? No, they're already I, writing it Ira- and React and 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 Angular and all the frameworks. Yeah, I, I mean, they're already doing these. You know what this reminds me of is in Windows 8 first, and I did it wrong, granted, but in Windows 8 first, and then again in Windows 10, Microsoft, among the many developer offerings that that they had, uh, provided a way for web developers to take all their skills. And kind of bring that stuff to Windows, and no one did it basically, right? Mm. Um, you don't. There, are, I mean, I think actually, I think the it's possible the Mail Calendar and People app originally they might not be now, but I think they originally were web apps that Microsoft created specifically for Windows 8 or something like that. But 
you don't really hear a lot about JavaScript HTML apps in Windows in the Windows Store. Like you just for some reason. And I I don't know. I, I maybe there's still just a maybe it's, I don't want to say cultural, but you know, developers come up in the world, they do things a certain way. I don't know. They don't want to. I don't, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't just, know either. I, I'm looking yeah. at this Google Photos uh, web app, and it's just really nice. I mean, yeah. it is really nice. Yeah. It's an app. It, it, yep. you, yeah. And and you know, <laughs> there isn't an well, app for uh, Google Photos anywhere else, and this was an easy thing for them to do. And uh, I feel like email, calendar, contacts, right? Tasks. Yes. Those are obvious. They should be obvious. PWA. PWA. Yeah. Maybe Obvious. users. Maybe the problem is that uh, users don't know to in their browser look. But users for wouldn't know. That's the, they, don't, they don't. They don't have, have to idea. know. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. You don't want they, them they to know, the right? Oh, it's in the store. Yeah, you don't want somebody to be like, oh, oh is this a progressive web app? app? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's like asking, yeah, but like was those. this app written in C plus yeah. plus or C sharp? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, you shouldn't have to worry about stuff. So you're so you can get in the store, of course. Yeah. So it looks like an app. Right. Yeah. It is an app. The technology used to make it is irrelevant. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Right. Can you get Google Photos be, in the right? Windows Store? Is it in the Windows Store? As no. an app? No. No. Mm. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. One I, I, well, I mean, Google Microsoft, Microsoft. Could yeah. technically <laughs> have just taken it and put it in there, but I think they don't because of a relationship thing. I'm, I'm sure uh, there's a yeah, me too. Uh, okay. yeah. political yeah. motivation there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, Paul, I, I was just remembering this now because you, you mentioned the mail app built into Windows 10. I remember asking Microsoft about that app and, and they said, yeah. you know what? This So this was maybe like two, three years ago. They said, this is the direction we want all our apps to go. I we know. want them all I to know. be like that. that. I know. Remember? And I'm like, really? Yes. Like, like no. This seems like a big step back, right? I, know. I, know. I don't think that's the case anymore, by the way, but I, I do remember so that. I'm being horrified yeah. by that. You yeah. you probably remember when Windows 8 was coming out, one of the earliest things they showed off was what at the time was still called the Windows Live apps. And it was yep. Chris Jones mm -hmm. and it was mm -hmm. mail and ca calendar, probably people, whatever they called it at the time. And I, I'm almost mm -hmm. positive they were HTML and JavaScript at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the point of that was like, look, we're doing it you know, this way too. You could do it as well. And then, you know, nobody did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like they're in a good place right now in terms of trying to clean up the old messes with things like WinUI 3, right? And trying to fix the mistakes of the Windows 8 timeframe that they inflicted oh on developers. God, no. But <laughs> it's like it's like eight years know. later. I mean, it, I it's. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and well, meanwhile, all these developers are writing stuff yeah. in Electron. Which, yes. Well, there Including was a React Microsoft. Native um, <laughs> a session, by the way, at. Ignite, and I only paid half attention to it, but you can create Windows Native apps in React Native now if you want. Right. To. Yeah. I that's, mean, they'll support anything. That, and that's Isn't probably... is the Teams a, client? The Teams client is an Electron app, I believe. That's what... That was the segue right? I was about to perform. Yeah. Yeah, because nice. um, yeah, Slack is Electron. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stuff's Electron, and I guess you get a real benefit because you've got... But it's heavy. <laughs> what is happening yeah. Because to you're the, basically including Chrome. The title of our notes is animating. Do you guys see that? Oh, that's my belly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was literally moving across yeah, the screen. Was funny. it really? Yeah, that's because yeah. my tummy was uh, head overhung. That is really funny. The space bar, sorry. It was <laughs> You're like, yikes. <laughs> like, I need to see a doctor. That's why you should <laughs> never have given me edit. <laughs> exactly. It was literally moving across I'm the screen. So sorry. I missed that, That's luckily. <laughs> so embarrassing. I did gain a little weight on the cruise. Oh my God. Never <laughs> That's never happened before. <clears throat> oh, um, mm, Got to get that girdle tightened. <laughs> so let's talk, let's talk about teams because it's interesting. They gave it away. They really were trying to compete against Slack, right? I mean, I, uh, mm. there's no one else in that space. I mean, there's lots of people, but there's no one else to compete against in that space. I mean, yeah. matter most, and I suppose some people use Discord or other chat solutions. Yeah. And but uh, but it's really Slack versus Teams, and Teams seems to yeah. be pulling ahead. Yeah, you know, I I'm 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 being hesitant on this because of a lot of things around numbers, and you can make numbers. Yeah say whatever you want to say, right? So this week, Microsoft said they have 20 million daily active Teams users. And the last number we have from Slack from October is 12 million. Yeah. So it looks like, yeah. wow, wow, right? Yeah. But then the whole issue comes up of how do you measure 
active users and what does that actually mean? You know, how active do you have to be to be an active user? Um, right. Because Slack always says, yeah, it's it doesn't really matter that they have more daily active users because if you look at how little engagement there is with their users, that tells you the story. Um, and then Microsoft, well, you know, I, they, I agree they with have, that. I do <laughs> but too. To a yeah. point, right? I mean, right. When when yeah. Teams is twice the size of Slack at some point, three times the size. I yeah. mean, you know, right? Engagement. No, what, I know. You know so. Like so far. I know. I asked Microsoft technically, what do you mean when you say daily active user? And, you know, they have a very literal definition. It's the, the maximum daily users performing an intentional action in 28 day period over desktop client, mobile and web client. Well, that's and so right. what, intentional that's action. Yeah. They send yeah. a message. Right. right. So they say that includes starting a chat, placing a call, sharing a file, editing a document within a team, be, being part of a meeting. Those are what they consider actions. And that to me is a legitimate seems thing. seems fair. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, part but what's Slack's I, definition? Yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't ask Slack what theirs is, but... Because I, the I got a little nasty gram from Slack. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. I ignored it. What did it um, say? <laughs> well, how well, dare you report Microsoft's Microsoft. number? No, they weren't nasty to me. No. They were nasty to Microsoft. No. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. No, they, I mean, they, they question the engagement piece, right? And how that's being measured and what oh, it and actually is. Well, they used Microsoft's measured. numbers to do it, right? They were saying, yeah. like, look, according to Microsoft, <laughs> you know, they have yeah. 20 million uh, active daily users. They're, those people are making 27 million voice or video meetings in a month, 220 million open edit or download actions on files in a month. Right. That translates to one monthly voice or video call and approximately 11 file actions per user. And they're saying that's not very engaged. Yeah. You know? Their, their users, I mean, among their paid customers, which actually whittles it down significantly, but whatever, spend yeah. more than nine hours per day connected to the service right. and those people send spend about 90 minutes per workday actively using slack yeah so i think what they're trying to say is not exponentially but a, a dramatically higher engagement yeah the number that worries me more than these dau daily active user numbers is mm -hmm. okay microsoft gives teams away as part of your office 365 commercial subscription not well, every single one of them but I, most of them right that's a, wait can i just i'm sorry that's a yes. tough way to say it I mean, they I mean, my people pay for that thing. They're not getting just Teams. No, they're right? pay, they're not paying anything extra for Teams. But I know, but <laughs> the way you're saying it is like they're giving it away for free. Like they they are paying for an Office 365 subscription. No, but anybody right. can use Teams, even if you don't have that. You Can't can you? For, yeah. if you get the um, free the free version, you could. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I mean, you no, can't so do my, a whole lot, I would guess. But I no, don't know. Yeah. right. It's okay. not as full right. featured, right. obviously. But no. So here's my point. But Slack does mm -hmm. the same thing, by the way. I should point. Yeah, out. yeah. That's how this Office works. Office 365. Office 365. How dare you compare business models, <laughs> <laughs> Paul? Listen. <laughs> Office 365 commercial subscribers. How many are there? Two hundred million. Mm. How many Teams users are there? Twenty million. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the number. I'm like. Okay, so why aren't more people using it? Do they not know it's in their subscription? Are they just not ready? Or are they using Slack even uh, though they're paying extra for Slack? Oh, that's interesting. And they get Teams for free? I bet right? that's not it for most of them. So I, I, to me, what those numbers compared uh, can be compared to is yeah. the number of users who had purchased Office in the past, over a billion at any one time compared to mm -hmm. a couple hundred million who are now using Office 365 mm -hmm. instead. It's mm -hmm. a, a small percentage of what was from before. So what that tells me is Microsoft's user base is, I don't want to say legacy, but they're kind of mm -hmm. traditional yeah. productivity, yeah. old school enterprise workers, right? right? So mm -hmm. I think moving to something like Teams is not going to be a very natural thing for the majority of the workforce, yeah. right? Who are older. Right. Yep. And I think the, the, that 10% or whatever the figure is, of people in the enterprise who are using uh, sorry, uh, Teams are mm -hmm. probably mostly younger people. Yeah, I would guess that too. That's my. That's just a guess. Yeah, me too. I would guess that too. That though that is the number. That though is the number that I look at, and I'm like, okay, if right. you're a half glass full person and you work for Microsoft, you're like, look at all the opportunity. Right. Well, and if so we're not. dealing with a company here, <laughs> Microsoft, that at one time claimed there were 330 million active users of Edge. Right. Which at that That's, time yeah, was well, yeah. statistically and literally impossible. 
<laughs> so I think the problem is if they said, well, um, you know, Mike, Teams goes out the door with uh, Office 365. Um, there were 200 million of those. The, thus, there are 200 million users. We won't call them active daily users, but we'll call them users because mm. they're paying mm. for it. You know. Yeah. I think a lot of people would have been like, eh, "Hold on a second. Mm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I, I, I give them a little credit for trying to make this a little bit more realistic, kind of like their laptop yeah. uh, battery life numbers. You know? uh, okay. Uh, so we should, so divide right, we should divide it in half. We should divide it in half. We should divide it in half. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, I'm not dissing teams. Well, I am kind of dissing teams, but the re <laughs> I don't even need to use teams because I'm not on a team. As as Whenever Microsoft says, oh, you're using teams, I'm like, I don't yeah, I don't use it because of, I'm an office of one. Yeah, kind right? of my problem is that none of us really work on teams. I know. Well, I do, but right. yeah, yeah, freelancers don't yeah. have teams. I mean, yeah. I hate collaborating. So I like, <laughs> I do. I yeah, hate it. I and I'm like, every time someone's like, wouldn't you love to be part of t a team on Teams? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we use that. Uh, use... Many writers are, are solitary creatures, yeah. I feel like, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know what it, like, um, That's why you're writing. Skype, our version of Teams is called Skype. And, it is. And the, yeah. that Skype tone that the someone is messaging you, I could be out. <laughs> in the world, I could be watching TV, I could be eating dinner, and that yeah. little tone occurs. And you're inwardly, right. I die a little bit every time, right? <laughs> because this is some... But sometimes it's Mary Jo, or sometimes it's my brother, or some. sometimes it is someone I want to hear from, but yeah. a lot of times it's not, you know? And it's like, yeah. uh, what now? You know? No. <laughs> and, and But I think, like, teams, you know, it's work. I mean, it's yeah. it's got to be the know, same right. the same terribleness, I right? Like, that's I, true. I mean, mean... We're right... We use Slack, mm. and uh, one of the things Slack did right, and one of the reasons they've been so successful, is they make Teams fun. That's oh. what Microsoft's trying to do too. There's right? a lot stickers, of stickers. Yeah, right? there's a lot Gosh, of, stickers. and honestly, it's bad for productivity. We have a <laughs> Slack channel called Random where people are putting like memes and stuff, and it's like, oh yeah. god. But yeah, that's kind of the key to making it so you don't go, ugh, I got a notification. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't. I see. I I would have a negative reaction to all of that stuff. I mean, yeah, I, and I say that knowing, because I, yeah. Well, <laughs> you hate emoji, maybe. so I mean, of course. <laughs> no, it's like uh, everyone I work with. There's always like a new Skype group, you know. Yeah. Um, for some reason, I'm a part of like 217 different Skype groups, <laughs> even though I only have five contacts at work. And you know, it's it's just the, it it just gets to me. It's like, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's you know it's. I know. Know. One Mary Joe and I sit in a room. And we write. We don't deal with people. That's the normal experience, you know. Yeah. So when that little thing is bouncing or you know beeping or whatever it does, it's just like what, what, why? <laughs> you know, I don't know. That's why every like day people. I start out pinging him and say good morning. Right. Yeah. Good good morning. Morning. My eyes start <laughs> twitching. You know? Yeah, because she sends me a little like uh, penguin that does backflips in the morning. You have to keep him happy. Nice. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <I'm going. laughs> you remember a couple of years ago that brought the Indian uh, internet to its knees in the country of it. India because it became the habit of Indians to send good oh, morning right. messages. Yep. Oh, yep. <laughs> and they were so heavy because they would do these giant images, clear, yeah. you know, animated yeah. gifts and stuff. And it just, it right. literally brought the internet down in India yep. every morning. Yeah. Everyone who knows me on email, messaging of any kind has received the response unsubscribe <laughs> <laughs> and i'm sure most of them don't even understand what, <laughs> what the I joke like was unsubscribe <laughs> Uns i don't want your stinking messages yeah. all right well oh, we're just gonna to well. we're just gonna have to let you know let this uh, n number race continue it's, yeah let's see what happens you right. know uh so what do you think is going to happen though don't you sort of feel like microsoft's you know, from a number perspective, will pull away, don't they you They should, because yeah. as right. you point out, people use Office 365. They already have it. Yeah. Right. Want to hear my conspiracy theory on why this number was shared this week? Why? I think Microsoft was worried somebody was going to either uh, have a big announcement with Slack or buy them. Oh. oh. Because look what's because happening this week. why would you week. announce this one Dream week Force. after Ignite? Oh. Dreamforce happened yeah. this week, so that's Salesforce. And then reinvent a AWS big conference is coming up soon. You know who would make conference. a great buyer for them? Google or <laughs> AWS, right? Yeah, right. That's true. I wonder if it's a little overvalued. 
Oh, well, Microsoft looked at them supposedly to buy them and said, nope, yeah, too expensive. Yeah. It's really, it, <laughs> it, it, you know, because it's the hot thing. I think it's yeah. way overvalued. Yeah. It's right. hard. It, that's a, I would bet, and, you know, this is the real number Microsoft will never tell you. I would bet it's hard to make money right. with these. Just uh, on that. Just yeah. on those things, you know. Microsoft <laughs> yeah. doesn't have to because Office 365 makes some money. Right. But does right. but the problem is, and I'll tell you that I get I know this from our own experience. So we were on HipChat. HipChat got sold mm -hmm. right. and and folded into Slack. And well, because you don't want to, you, once you have one, it doesn't matter how good or bad it is. You have it. Mm -hmm. And the last yeah. thing you want to do is say, "All right, everybody, change. We're now going to be using yep. WhatsApp." Yep. There's a big resistance to the change. So whatever mm -hmm. you've got going, unless it's terrible. Yeah, you're just going to stick with it. So that's the real thing they're fighting. Oh, by now, the way, you you literally just described how the enterprise works. It's called inertia. Inertia. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> well, and I know yeah. this because I because for a long time I said to Lisa, "Can we please move to Slack?" And she said, "No, we got hip chat." She did, she said, "I'm not going to move everybody over." Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but then we had to because because <laughs> they sold it and folded it. Uh, I looked at yeah. team when that happened. I looked at teams. Mm -hmm. And the only reason we didn't go to Teams at that point, because there was a an inflection point where we weren't, we had to choose something mm -hmm. new. But the inflection point was Teams didn't have all the integrations that Slack had, and that by which mm -hmm. I mean, there's all these tools we use, server monitoring and things like that, that can integrate into Slack. So Slack becomes a dashboard for all the notifications you need to get about, you know, how stuff's working and mm -hmm. so forth. And without those integrations. Um, it really teams wasn't a player now i'm sure that's changed dramatically yeah, i haven't looked it at it but I, that's one of the yeah. things you got to do is mm -hmm. add all those integrations and who yeah. and who 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 better to do that than microsoft right yeah i mean or amazon maybe you know and yeah. so that would be an interesting threat if somebody if google or amazon came along and said well we don't care how much it's going to cost we're going to buy slime mm -hmm. uh, one of them should actually i guess i'm guessing google yeah, because Google's more in the productivity app space than well, Amazon. Well, Amazon is. wants to be in this space, right? They yeah. announced a bunch of productivity services yeah. that no one's heard from since. But uh, exactly. <laughs> this, well, I mean, this would be a nice jump. No, uh, the true. problem yeah. for Slack, if you look at it from the other uh, 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 angle, is they don't have all those other things, right? They literally have this one thing, one and product. it's just easier yeah. from the perspective of any business to kind of buy into something that gives you everything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. That's gonna be interesting. It almost yep. doesn't matter if it's better yeah. at some point. Mm. Let me take a little uh, break. We'll talk about Jedi, speaking of Amazon, in uh, in just a moment. But first a word from Ring Central, which I you know, I have to point out, we use Ring Central. They have a great team messaging platform. But again, it's the case of well, we the funny thing is we've had Ring Central forever. This is probably similar to Office 365 where you've got features you just didn't know about. Ring Central seems to have been adding a lot of features. They are our phone system as you know. We put Ring Central in when we moved to the Brick House two studios ago because we needed a phone system and I never even thought about going to the phone company for a phone system and a PBX in the basement all that great expense and complexity. Ring Central is the number one global cloud phone system. And we've been so happy with it, but it does pretty much everything you want to do in business. If communication is in the, the, the you know, the the DNA of what you want to do, you, Ring Central does it. So I'll give you some examples. When you're on the go, you can put Ring Central, the app, as I do on my phone, and now I can manage my business, work remotely with my phone, even using my business phone number, my business uh, for messaging, for phone calls. And if I'm on my phone and I get back to work, I could switch it right over to my desktop without dropping the call. They don't even know. It makes it very easy to route calls. Any business can sound like a big business because Ring Central gives you all this capability. I set up the phone tree myself and it was easy to do. And, and it's fantastic to have. Uh, and what's nice, my messages, not only uh, can I get them on my phone, but they come to my smartphone as texts. They come into my email if I want. So it's this is the digital revolution in telephony, frankly. And Ring Central does it all. They've got video conferencing. They've got great team messaging. They've got faxing. <laughs> I mean, occasionally you still need to send a fax. We don't have to have a fax machine. We have Ring Central. It works with Gmail, with Zapier, one of our favorites, with Salesforce. Yes, it works with Outlook. You can get voicemail. It's transcribed. If you're stuck in a meeting, you don't even have to see what the voicemail was. 
or listen to what the voicemail is. You can just look and see what it is. If it's urgent, you can respond to it. I love that. You can be very discreet and still check your messages. Plus, it grows with you. It's easy to add additional uh, users. It's very affordable. A new employee, and this happens to us all the time, a new employee comes in, they're set up with Ring Central almost instantly. It's more than a phone system. It makes it easy to connect with customers and employees so you can give effortless service to the people that matter the most. With any mode, on any device, anywhere, their app gives you integration, letting you transition from your personal phone to your computer during a call. Ring Central app is way ahead of its time. It lets you send business text messages, SMS, from your personal phone. You don't even have to transfer your contacts into the app because it knows. It automatically populates them for you. They even let you port your existing numbers over from other services. We had a great 800 number. We transferred it over to Ring Central. And it still works. All our numbers still work. Ring Central, and everybody now has an extension, which makes it so easy. Ring Central is the complete communication system. And because it's one vendor, it is so easy to set up. You do it. You can do it all online. They have great people if you have questions, but you can do it all online. It starts as low as 1999 means you can cut your phone costs and i'm telling you at least 30 percent and again 24 7 telephone support live chat email we never even when we moved even considered going anywhere else it was just and it made it easy to move because it's all digital it's all decentralized it's so simple when you sign up today, you'll get an instant access to Ring Central's award-winning, powerful phone system with text, fax, video conferencing, uh, team messaging, and a whole lot more. Ring Central makes it very easy to switch from your current provider. It was couldn't have been simpler for us. And I didn't know this, but they have a holiday bundle for Windows Weekly listeners. You don't pay until 2020. If you go to, but you know that's more valuable. The sooner you go to ringcentral.com/windows, R I N G ring, ring, R I N G central, central.com/windows. Don't pay till 2020. Go right now because that's getting less valuable every day, right? You want to take advantage of that. Get a get a like six weeks free. Ringcentral.com/windows. Paul Throt, Mary Joe Foley. The only team worth messaging with, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> so what is this Jedi thing? This is wild. This was a big win for Microsoft. It was. Amazon's not happy. No. And you can not be surprised by Amazon appealing this, They think right? it's political. So they think the president, you know, put his thumb on the scale. They aren't the only <laughs> ones who think that. Come on. Oh, why would he do that? Yeah. So Jedi Joint Enterprise Defense Infrastructure. This is the giant $10 billion uh, government cloud contract that's been years in the making and years in the bidding. Everybody, all the big cloud companies were bidding on it at one point. Amazon, Microsoft, Google, um, Oracle. And then one by one, they all started dropping out until it was down to Amazon and Microsoft. Then... Microsoft surprisingly won. And I'm going to say surprisingly because all the industry watchers I know was saying Amazon's got this right. And whether you think it was because of um, insider baseball stuff that shouldn't have been going on with Amazon and the DOD or whether you think they had more and better technology and more coverage of what the government was looking for, whatever. Everybody thought Amazon was going to win. And Microsoft won, surprisingly. This is a winner take all contract, by the way. So whoever wins gets the whole thing and you know you'll subcontract parts of it out but you're the you are the contractor on it. $10 so billion. basically this is the new Pentagon cloud. It is. Yep. And and the the key for the Pentagon of course is security, encryption, yep. privacy, mm -hmm. you know, yep. the Russians are going to attack it. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah. can Microsoft provide all of that? I mean, I don't think Microsoft winning is a bad thing. Microsoft no. can do all that, right? Microsoft, they have all the parts, right? They wouldn't have made it to the end if they hadn't. And they were getting all the certifications they needed and they could show that they could stand up all the uh, uh, platform as a service and the infrastructure as a service pieces that they wanted. But people still said, you know, AWS has been doing this longer. They've got more coverage. They've got more expertise. So that's why I'm saying people thought Microsoft would be a distant second on this, or at least a second. Uh, but as of last Friday night, when Amazon told a couple of government uh, publications that they had decided 
to officially protest the bid. We didn't know if they would. Uh, everybody was kind of guessing they would, but they they did. And now we're going to see what happens because, uh, you know, I've seen some people say, okay, so of course it's going to be overturned and Microsoft's going to lose now. Absolutely That's not, that's not a given. <laughs> no, it's not even close. It's No. Microsoft decided to throw in the blue flag. They're going to lose it. I mean, Amazon, they're going to lose a timeout yeah. because yeah. the decision of the judges on the field is always going to be, unless there's a strong case. Oh, wait a minute. I'm mixing up my football metaphors. But unless there's a, <laughs> unless there's a strong case it. to overthrow <laughs> this decision, yeah. you'd have to get, and you can see how hard this is with the current impeachment hearings. You'd have to yeah. get a smoking gun where, yep. you know, the president sent an email to somebody saying, under no circumstance can Jeff Bezos get this contract. Yeah. Um, given what's Which, going on today. Not that that doesn't Washington, exist, that, but that what, are you, exist. what are you going to hold congressional here? I mean, my, Amazon's not going to win this one. If yeah. Microsoft couldn't do the job, maybe. Right. But they can. Right. In fact, honestly, yeah. I think they'll probably do a better job than Amazon would. This is what they do. This is what Azure is, right? Yeah. Um, I think what Amazon's going to go for is the political uh, tampering. Of course, but they're going to have to angle. find a smoking right. gun, and they don't have subpoena power. I don't know how yeah. they're going to do that. Um, no, but there have been different reports in the media about an email such as the one you're suggesting existing and somebody having seen it. So, you oh, know, we'll okay. see. We'll see. I don't know. I, I, this thing has just gotten to be such a mess, but nobody's going to throw in the towel, right? It's $10 billion over 10 years, so they both want to win. It's probably more than that in a way because one, yeah. once this is concluded, I mean, there's instant credibility there and there are other government departments. Yeah, that's uh, really that what it is. Follow Good the point. Lead. I mean, a yeah. billion dollars in a year is nice. But yeah, it's really not that much. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I would yeah. guess that it's the prestige. As much mm. as anything else. Although it's interesting, one of the reasons Google dropped out is because its employees, its engineers, didn't want them to do a government contract, right? That's what they there, said. There's some I don't contract. It. Oh, you think they dropped out because they couldn't do it? <laughs> yeah, I think they dropped out because they couldn't do it. It would have been bad if Oracle had one. I'm, I'm admitting that right now. <laughs> Oracle. Oracle. <laughs> Man, they don't even have a cloud. What are they even making up? Even Oracle. Oh, we got a database. Terrible. Is that what you need? <laughs> Um, I they were laughed at their, their appeal. Oracle's appeal was laughed off and they said, guys, you know, you, you're no. not in the league that no. we need for this yeah. thing. So, I imagine yeah. it's, uh, did they say how much data? I mean, I imagine it's gotta be just, you know, sure. exabytes yeah, of data. I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen the numbers of what is included, They're like in all points. the limits of the, uh, the word document translator feature. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like this craziest storm of legacy document. server's gonna be going crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but and actually, that yeah. might be the other reason for it, because in effect, you're getting a government subsidy to build new infrastructure that you can then sell to other customers. Mm. Yeah. So in a way, that may be the real value of it is, uh, and we've seen this before. I mean, when you get big investment, that's what happened with fiber in the 2000s. Yeah. All this stuff gets laid because there's government and other investors uh, throwing money at it. And then you have the benefit of it down the road. Mm -hmm. So I could see why you'd want this, and I could see why Jeff Bezos yeah. is, you know, fighting it. If yeah, I were him, I would have thrown the blue towel in, too. Yep, same. You know, blue flag. But he's going to lose a towel. Out. Towel. <laughs> the blue towel. I like the towel. <laughs> <laughs> towel. <laughs> he's going to throw in a blue towel, and he's going to lose a timeout. <laughs> he's going to lose a timeout because the ruling of the judges stands. <laughs> Microsoft. So you said Dreamforce is, uh, is it this week? Is it soon? It is. Yep. And Microsoft, uh, Satya Nadella will be on stage. No two companies hate each other more than these two. And my God, are they best no buddies kidding. all of a sudden. <laughs> Such yeah. is everywhere. Yeah. He is everywhere. And somehow, uh, after all the Benioff rants about how much he hates Microsoft and how he thought they cheated him out of the LinkedIn deal. and um, it's incredible. How they didn't buy his company when he tried to get them to sell, to sell it to them. Mm -hmm. um, now they're sort of friends again, frenemies, right? So um, Salesforce said they're going to be using Azure as its cloud for the Salesforce marketing cloud. So that's one of their big clouds. Not It doesn't mean they're going all Azure because they still have a big deal with AWS. And they also have a big deal with Google as well. You mm -hmm. know, they're multi-cloud like everybody these yeah, days. Everybody. That's the only sensible thing to do. Yeah, yeah. But it still looks interesting from from an outsider's perspective because I kind of thought, okay, Salesforce and Microsoft, they're done. Like they're not palling around at all anymore. 
And it, and they also announced Teams is going to be integrated with um, the Salesforce sales and service clouds. So there's right. one of those integrations you're talking about in Teams. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting that that they got them to concede. But one of my uh, colleagues at ZDNet said, oh, I bet the Salesforce AWS deal is up for rebid. And that's why they did the Azure <laughs> thing to put pressure. I'm like, yeah, could, could be. be. Yep. People think that business is like personal relationships. It isn't. <laughs> it isn't. Right. It isn't. It's business. We, we want it to be because that makes it more fun to write about it, right. but it's, it's not really. It's a great yeah. soap opera, but that's not it. It is. People are yeah. acting as econ homo economus. Yes. Well, I don't know what that means, but it's Latin. Home economics. <laughs> home economics. <laughs> it's, right. all about, it's all about crafts. <laughs> it's all about bacon bread. Um, I, uh, I'm so sad that I, uh, I will not have Cortana on my iPhone anymore. <laughs> right. If Cortana is killed on mobile and nobody installed it, was Cortana <laughs> ever installed on mobile? If Cortana falls in a forest. <laughs> yeah. But, but, okay, does this surprise you, though, Cortana being removed as a standalone assistant on iOS no, and Android? No, it's just no. a continuous decline. Yeah. yeah. One more step I, I, down yeah, the ladder. I mean... I, it kind of removes the pretense, right? Because mm -hmm. as long yeah. as this was around, you could, you could, you know, the, the holdouts could kind of make this argument. Well, you know, it's everywhere I want it to be. And yeah, I, but it. my argument is it's going to be everywhere you want it to be because of the new strategy, which is making it yeah. bubble up into your productivity apps. That makes way more sense, right? Instead of having it be this standalone thing that you have to call on. It's yeah. already in the yeah. app, right? Sure. It's going to be in yep. Outlook Mobile, and it's going to be in, you know, SharePoint. Yeah. It's going to you be could in make your the apps. right. It's like uh, if you want to take advantage of the timeline feature in Windows 10, right? Um, yeah. You're not going to add a feature called timeline to Android. You're going to put the timeline compatibility in every one of the apps. Yeah, you know. Makes more sense. It's a little to me. bit. I'm trying. I don't know. I'm making lemonade over here. I I don't I don't know what to think of yeah. this. I I think part of the weirdness here is that at least on Android, you could replace everything with Cortana if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, you could. Yeah. And you're, we're, you know, I didn't use it, but I mean, people do yeah. obviously, and they're mm -hmm. that's going to be gone. I've I've that's, tried to use it on my Android phone, and I've had yeah. trouble because. The way Android's set up is it it wants you to default, obviously, to their assistant, right, to Google. <laughs> sure. Then when of you course. switch, it's like some of your stuff is working with that and some of it's working with the other assistant or they're, they're like fighting yeah. it out, kind of, right? <laughs> do you uh, – you don't use the Microsoft launcher, do you? I use it, but I don't really use it. Like it's there. Yeah, because I feel yeah. like um, if you replace that as well, that would probably be less of a problem. Yeah, but I just I, don't I understand did, the yeah. the rationale for any of that. I mean, why would anyone? I know who who does that. I mean, it. who you know? I'm gonna put the Microsoft keyboard on. I'm gonna put the Microsoft launcher on. Yeah. I'm gonna put the Microsoft Assistant yeah. on. You still have it if know. you have Office 365, right? I mean, you still or Microsoft 365, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think as as that, they evolve it, it'll be part of that. But it's yeah. more like that's text dictation it's not a command assistant that you it's not like a thing a separate thing yeah. right the way we think yeah. of assistance as being something embedded in a speaker that you talk to it's going to be different so, i mean that. everybody knew it was coming down to amazon and google sure yeah. it, right who's well i mean actually i mean I, I siri i think has a pretty large user base yeah, but as well, and for some reason, Samsung <laughs> oh, yeah, continues about to Bitsy. insist. <laughs> I know. So did everybody else. Yeah, I think it's Amazon, Google. I'm, I think Google's going to yeah. take it all, though. I think I, I think it depends I, on how you use the assistant. Maybe, yeah, maybe there's room for more than one. Yeah, and and yeah. the way you use it, right? Like if you right. use it just for your work, like I want it to set my work reminders, or I want it to be able to schedule my calendar appointments with somebody else. Then I I think it has a chance. Microsoft has a chance. Yeah, but you know, maybe it just doesn't matter which one you're using, no matter what you're using it for, right? So, yeah. if you're at home and you have a, a Amazon speakers around the house and you can say, "A hey, blah blah blah, do this thing," if you've connected the same calendar to this thing, it will it will do that. And if you're on your phone and it's an Android phone and you're using Google Assistant, you say, "Gee, blah blah blah," mm -hmm. it will you know like maybe it doesn't matter. Mm. You know, maybe. You know, to you to most users, right? Yeah. 
Um, I don't know if you if were I'm... in a Microsoft app and, and you were asking it a question and Cortana was doing it on the back end, would you care or would you need to know that or would it matter? No, not really. Right. I don't know if I'm typical, but I feel like I want to pick one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just I, I don't want to have because it's yeah. high, very hybridized in my house. I've got Echo and mm -hmm. Google everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, but right. I kind of want to just throw out one of them. Well, and use all you know the though? same. Wouldn't it all <laughs> so, work better that way? <laughs> It, it should, but here's what I've experienced. So we, we did standardize on Google, the theory being that obviously it's Google. They're going to win this one. So the past three years in a row, Amazon has come up with what I call a tsunami of new products every September. And Google farts out a couple of things and then forgets about them for three years. And my Google system obviously just kicked in because I said, anyway, um, and I, I, I sometimes feel like. Google isn't as serious about this market as yeah. they should be. And Amazon is incredibly mm. serious this is, about this, this market. This is Google's problem in general. Yeah. yeah. Nobody they kind of believes them. Yeah. They yeah. think, oh, well, I'll just kill that down the road. I can't trust that, it. Yeah. So, you know, we, we uh, look, our, our usage may be normal or abnormal. It's kind of hard to say. We don't really use a lot of voice control for a lot of things. We just don't, you know. And, yeah. But I feel like any assistant could handle what we're doing. Uh, play some news, play a podcast. Show me a blah, blah, whatever it is. Like uh, we have a Google photo frame and a cool God, picture will come or a smart those, display. I am so sold now on those hubs. Yeah, I love that. Love it. Oh, mm. my you God. You know what happens, Leo, in my kitchen? Like I'll say, um, hey, I don't want to say all this. Yeah. Hey, G, blah, blah, whatever the thing is. And one of the one of the speakers will answer. Yeah, and yeah. then the thing I asked for will start playing out of another I speaker. Know. And I'm like, what is going on? It's I like know. a madhouse here. And it's all Google I know. Stuff. In our kitchen, yeah. we literally have a Siri, uh, Apple HomePod, an Echo Show, and the Google, the big Google nice. Nest. You just let them fight it out when you're all gone. All three of them are right there. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, you can ask either any of them to time things. But I love right. the picture frame because it's yes. so easy. Everything's in Google Photos. Mm -hmm. And so I just say this, 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 and this. And if you see any pictures of Lisa, frame. put it in it. there. And I'm getting pictures from 20 years ago. I'm yep. getting pictures from yesterday. While we were on vacation, Lisa's son so, said, Leo, you had pictures you know from this. Egypt were showing up on the photo frame. You probably know nice. this. But when, when I first got the smart display, you couldn't, there was no way to share what was on the screen. You couldn't oh. do it. Huh. So I used to take photos of the screen <laughs> and I'd send it to be like a picture with me and my sister from 30 like years ago. Like, hey, no, Jill, I would do the picture. same thing. So like, did you see? I yeah. just saw this picture of us. Right. So, you know, you can do that. You can actually say, hey, G, share yeah. this photo. Oh, nice. And now. It will, yes. And oh, it will I'm actually send that. the photo. Oh, I'm yeah, going to use it's that. It's awesome. That is it's great. Awesome. So that's yeah. why I think Google's going to win this one. I really do. I ended up replacing my ring doorbell with a Nest. Hello. Wow. And you know why? Because when somebody comes to the door, my Google Home Hub says someone's at the yeah. door. And if it knows yeah. who it is, it'll say Michael's at the door. That's pretty awesome. Wow. Yep. And, and, it show, and immediately shows a picture, <laughs> a live video from the front door. Right. Yeah. I just want it so I can watch the deer walking through my yard at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> the, the only reason we have cameras around the house is so Lisa can check to see where the cats are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a use. That's a, That's good, a good use, use case. case. Right. I want the we're, night vision view of wildlife. In the Middle East, mm -hmm. she's saying, oh, I see the cat. <laughs> right. She really missed it. It gives you peace of mind. It does. Mm hmm I, I always said, oh, we're not going to have cameras. That's the that's paranoia. I know. You know it gets weird, large. right? <laughs> yeah. uh, but once you get one. I don't one, want cameras in the house. But I but cameras pointing out, is I'm okay with that. Mm. Well, there is a camera on that Nest Hub Max. And it yeah. also knows me. So when it sees me, it goes, Broom, and shows my schedule. Oh, she's really? Yeah. So I have the mm -hmm. Lenovo one. And if I'm not mistaken, I know you can turn off the microphone. I think you can put a slide over the camera. I'm sure you can. And nobody, so. yeah, everybody wants to be able I to block so. those. Um, but it's kind of nice because I, if I walk up to it, it says, well, here's what you're, here's what you're doing today. Mm -hmm. We're getting close to that, you know, Scarlett yeah. Johansson in your ear mm -hmm. is soon. I feel like. Yeah. And I think Google's well, that's, got it. That's I hope it is Scarlett Johansson in my ear. That would be pretty good. <laughs> Cortana in my ear? I don't want Cortana in my ear. No, no. She's going to send you a daily briefing if you want it that lists everything that you're going to have for the, in the day. Google's this been doing that Microsoft for 12 years. Today. <laughs> yeah. I don't want it because I've been using the reminders <laughs> there and they either. don't ever remind me of anything real no, that I, I want. I it's want all the either. things I'm like just saying casually yeah. to people over email and I'm like, no, that's not what I want. Yeah. It's so fun to sit here and look and see and think what's going to be like. But we've yeah. all been doing this long enough that we know it's almost impossible. That strange, you know, weird things happen. Mm -hmm. 
there's yep. sudden left turns and so forth. But it's really fun mm -hmm. to think about. And I don't think we're too far off from a very, yeah, we're already in a very interesting world. Yeah, for sure. But I, I think for me, like you mentioned PWAs earlier, this is a really good example. And this thing we're talking about now, which I think of as ambient computing is a great example. Mm -hmm. These things never happen as fast as I think no. they're going to. I, no. the, I see something <laughs> like both of those topics and I think this is clearly the future. This is going to happen right. really quick. And, you know, yeah, years right, go by right. and it's like, yeah, you know, right. it, it's smarter, it's better, but mm -hmm. it's not quite as pervasive as no. I thought it was going to be. No, yeah. it's true of everything. In fact, there's a, there is an yeah. adage, technology both happens sooner than you think and <laughs> yes. it takes longer than it's you like, thought. It's um, like kids, you know, you can't yeah. wait for them to get and out of the house suddenly, and suddenly it's 20 years later. You're like, wait, where are you going? Exactly. <laughs> you <know? laughs> no, that's a very like, apt analogy. Yeah. You know? Hey, big victory for Microsoft's Visual Studio Code. I think this is cool. Yeah. Facebook's going to use it. Yeah. yeah. Default VS Code, bit. default <laughs> developer environment. Right? Not, And this is not Visual Studio. This is VS Code. Right. VS Code, mm -hmm. yeah. Which, by the way, I, I, even the most anti-Microsoft Linux guys on oh, Earth, awesome. I, they're still out there for some reason. I think almost anyone who uses it would, would say, wow, this actually, nice. this thing is amazing. It's so many Visual Studio Code is amazing. Yeah. yeah. The only uh, issue is it's an Electron app. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Right, right. So whether you want it or not, you're going to have Chrome in your, on your system. Many, yep. many versions. The mm. Trojan horse. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> uh, I I canceled Stadia. I'm going to. I did it. too. Yep. Oh. You and know why? Wow. Why? Because they were going to launch with 12 games, and the next day Microsoft came out and said, eh, "We got 50 we games. Got we're not even out yet." And I was like, <laughs> "You know those. what? Yeah, this is 130 bucks. I never need to spend on nothing." Yep. Mm. You know? Yep. Um. So this is the Xbox segment. Mary Jo, I'll just turn your camera off. It's all right. I'll just take <laughs> no, a little this nap. Is good. This, is, no, this is good stuff. It's all yours, you know, the, Paul. The Google thing, so I, this came up you know, while you were away, and I'll just repeat it for your benefit, and um, I, I, it's important. Because Microsoft last year said they were working on this thing called Project xCloud. And, you know, obviously the future of video game. Google in the spring came out and said, hey, we got this thing called Stadia and we're going to ship it in November. And everyone freaked out, like, what's going on? Microsoft's not even ready. How are they so far ahead? And they would have these announcements. They talked about the controller that was connected wirelessly to the thing and Microsoft doesn't have that. What's going on? And blah, blah, blah. And of course, as we get closer to the Stadia launch and now it's occurred, we discover they don't have any games. All the features they promised aren't even ready yet. Um, if you play it on the screen attached to your PC, you only get 1080p. It doesn't even do 4K. On and on it goes. Like, it's just, it's Google. You know, they ship this thing in a pre-release state. So, um, yes, it, it, not everyone can get Project X Cloud yet. It's still in kind of a limited public preview. But um, the service, in many ways, is already better. I, my only problem with X Cloud today, and it's in preview, is that you, I can only play it on a, a phone screen. And for, I'm sorry, for me, when you think about a typical, like a 27-inch or a huge 16-inch screen, whatever it is, you have text on the screen, uh, some kind of a HUD and a shooter or whatever, I can read that. When it's on a screen like this big and it's like a little dicky, you know, one, one uh, pixel high line of text, I, I, I can't see that. So I, I, for me, using a controller with a little screen, it's it's the dream. But the truth is, for most games, I can't really see the text and say so it makes it hard to play. Um, so eventually, obviously, xCloud will expand uh, to more clients. It'll, we'll be able to play them on PCs and but on the living room on a big screen. You're a hardcore gamer. So yep. do you think there is a, a, a casual gamer market for it of some kind? Yeah, no, I think it's uh, this. This I mean, will span. I mean, X Cloud will sure. be for Xbox people. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, that's fair. So that's maybe fair. Stadia has a niche somewhere. I don't think Google has any business being in this business. No, I, I think I, you're honestly, right. I don't think Google is the future. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. I have to agree with I you. I just don't. I, I'm sorry. You know, I. And this is the thing. This goes back. If you we can go back, you can find the article I wrote. It was March or something. You know, what Google doesn't have still are these deep-seated, decades-long relationships with studios and publishers and exclusives and all of the things that you have to just pay the price and experience over many years. Uh, and in Microsoft's case, basically be defeated in three, you know, uh, console generations in a row. That you That's how you earn, you, earn, you earn the bruises. You can't just show up and say, I'm going to do it. Like, it doesn't work that way. Um, so... Yeah, good luck, Google. <laughs> you know, I mean, I just for don't... serious gamers, the la there's so many features lacking that everybody yep. else supports. Right. Like, uh, you know, uh, achievements. Like achievements. Yeah. <laughs> like that, like, like everything, Leo, basically. Like basically everything. Yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. for the serious gamer. Okay, so we're going to rule mm -hmm. them out. 
<laughs> but casual um, gaming is a thing that occurs without a service. I or, don't need a service. I could play Apple Arcade on every device. Yeah, which is cheap. It's, you know. it's cheap. They've got an infinite number of more games than yeah. I ever would care to play. Well, most casual gaming, gaming, I believe, is is uh, time wasting gaming. You're yes, a you're in the quiet line. moment. You're playing you're with friends, or you're yeah. yes, exactly. And I, you know, I'm not going to spend sixty bucks on a AAA title on a service that, frankly, I don't think is going to be around in eighteen months. Right. So I, I don't think this is a good bet. It's not a winner. Boom. <laughs> you know, it's it, right. it's it's a problem. So yeah, I canceled it. I just uh, I my original I, I I pretty much always thought this. My original goal getting it was just to be able to write about it and compare it and say, you know, this is how it does better or worse, whatever. And it occurred to me last week finally, like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't think this is going to no, be around. That's why I canceled it. You too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting. Great minds. <laughs> maybe <laughs> you know. Maybe we'll be proven wrong. But I. When does X Cloud come out next year? Right. Next year, yeah. Even that I don't care about. I got the games I want. If I want another yep. game, I'll buy it. Oh, by the way, but here's the other beauty. I should have said this too. This is maybe the most important deal. If you're someone who, look, Microsoft um, has not done well in this console generation. There's no doubt about it. But the thing is, they've taken that defeat and turned it into the very best gaming service on earth. And they've made all these changes. It's amazing. They've worked to make this thing cross-platform compatible. And now with xCloud, X -Cloud, it's as cross-platform as it can be. So one of the cool things that happened to me, for example, when I started testing this was I had started playing the new Gears of War game on Xbox One. And I played a little bit of it on the PC, and that was really cool. And then I got xCloud, and that was one of the games. And now I'm playing it on a phone, and it's like single player. It's like, do you want to pick up where you left off? I'm like, yeah. yeah. And it's the same game. Yeah. It's just the same game. And that's the beauty of it. It, it preserves your investment. Um, because you might have, uh, in my case, three generations of games that all, not all, I mean, many of them have come forward and they work and they will work on xCloud as well. And that's huge. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. With Google Stadia, you're just starting mm -hmm. over from scratch, you know. And that's and, fine for some and, people. And you have to buy the games. That's what I mean. Like you have to. It's yeah. nuts. I know. I mean, you've got to have some value proposition. There's some reason to use it and they aren't giving you anything. Right. Like, here's a couple of games. Here's a controller that's a little bit like the one you probably used to. Um, they don't even you give you the clip today, to use it with your Pixel phone. Yeah, you got to use a you got to use a uh, a cable if you want to play it on anything other than a Chromecast. I mean, it's like what are we, what are you talking about? It's crazy. Yeah, I don't. Really I just get don't it. think it makes sense. Yeah, I don't really get it. I'm also, look, I'm getting older. I, one of the things I'm have I have a real problem with is just the constant influx of new stuff to buy and the pointlessness of it. And you can look back and see the wreckage behind us of all the stuff that was here for 18 months or two years and then disappeared off the face of the earth. I mean, this thing just has all the makings of temporary. <laughs> that, that's fine. I know. Um you know, like Cortana. Like <laughs> so. Cortana. And, you know, to add insult to injury, Google Assistant's now available on your Xbox, so... Yeah, and th th this is interesting primarily because you have to wonder about Windows, right? So on, on Xbox, as of now, you can use Cortana, you can use Google Assistant, and you can also use the, the Amazon Assistant. And it's interesting, right? So one of the improvements that came in Windows 10 version, I think it actually might be 1909, is the ability to access your assistant, your non-Cortana assistant from the lock screen. So the Windows, the computer doesn't even have to be signed in for this to work. It's optional, obviously. You can configure it. But uh, today we only have the Amazon Assistant on Windows. But with Google on Xbox, I mean, it, Xbox is Windows, right? So it's coming to Windows, right? I mean, it has to be. No one has said this, but obviously it is. And so I think eventually Windows becomes this place where whatever assistant you've chosen, yeah. uh, it's just something you can plug in and use and... Um, I think it's inevitable. Do so. either of you use a, a voice assistant on your on your laptop no. or desktop? No. no, you don't press. You know, I've got it on my Chrome. Oh no, Chromebooks. I turn all that off. I've got it on. Uh, you know, I've got Google yeah. on my Chromebooks. I've got uh, Siri on my MacBook. It's on. Mm. I do turn. Here's the, the theory. I, I, I don't. I'm not against it. I just don't want it for myself. <laughs> it just never so, comes up to like no. use it. Well, yeah. but uh, if you look, we. We don't live in the future. So in the future, the stuff, the ambient stuff will just be wherever it is. It's everywhere. So today you have to physically put something in a room and say, look, here's a speaker. Here's a thing, whatever it is. We talked about smart displays. It was really cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess a Windows PC, if, if it's in a public area of your house, could act like a 
an assistant that could do that screen functionality, maybe. Yeah, but we already it's have not, those not things. It's fine. Yeah. I know, I know. But I'm just, you know, maybe you live in an apartment and you have the, the computer is what you have and you want to have everything go through the computer and, okay, cool. But I I don't see it as a big mm-hmm. use case for assistance, no. Yeah. Uh, f- not. F- finally... I didn't know this wasn't approved. Mixer <laughs> is approved for streamers. I thought that's what Mixer was for. No, improved. improved. Oh, improved. I thought you said uh, approved. <laughs> yeah, that's, improved. That is what it's. Okay. No, it's just a. Um, uh, I, I don't care. I don't. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> this is okay. one of those things too. I, I gotta wonder. Well, I will say one of the saving grace of Mixer is it's available natively on the console and in Windows 10 through that um, yeah, game bar functionality that Mary yeah, Jo doesn't like right. for some reason. Uh, which in 2021, by the way, is getting much, much better. Um, Good. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, I will That's say nice, I, Paul. I, <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> the ability to take a screenshot or record a game clip, I think, is a more common scenario on a Windows computer than someone needing to create 3D objects or agree. do mixed reality. You no, know it does That's that really well. Google Stadia does a great job. Does yeah, right. Actually, that one oh, right. Okay, That's the one it. thing it does, right? <laughs> it's, it could be the one thing it does. Yeah. So, well, they actually Mixer does a good job of this. So, um, anyway, they keep extending the platform. This is just a way to um, it just create. Uh, Mick, is Mixer the default now on Xbox? When you say you know take yeah. take a picture or stream that or copy yes, that? Yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. If you bring up, I, I hesitate to do this because it will screw everything up. But if I bring up the game bar now. Uh, in this app, which I should never have done because that will come up all the time. Yeah, you get a capture. <laughs> it's really a window, but you can uh, you just take a screenshot, record the past 30 seconds, just record, yeah. right, audio or video. It's nice. But I used to love that on uh, Xbox. If you you know had a really nice kill, you'd say, yep, record that. But that that and that would go to Mixer now. Well, it's Actually, like it's yeah. Xbox key X for me is is uh, oh, I think screenshot and Y up, is man. I think Y is the record. Get it all set up. Uh, let's take a break. Mary Jo has beer. I do. <laughs> yep. She needed it after that segment. She has There's beer. hope. There's hope yet, <laughs> folks. We're also going to do an app pick, a tip of the week, an enterprise pick, a code name. Lots of good stuff still to come. But first, a word from our sponsor, Captera. Uh, I think everybody listening to this show knows that business software runs business. Your business relies on it. There's, you know, I can't think of a, a single business that doesn't have some sort of line of business app that is just kind of critical. Unfortunately, in so many businesses, it's an old program that requires, you know, I mean, I still see this, Windows XP or IE5 or something. I need ActiveX controls to run this. Flash. This is not good. You don't, and the best news of all is you don't need to suffer with this old stuff because there is great new software for every possible business, and I have the place to find it. Capterra. Capterra is amazing. 700 categories of business software, thousands of programs, everything from the the big boys, you know, things like digital workplace software, video management software, social media management software, to in in specific line of business programs like yoga studio management or dog groomer management, mortuary management. Yeah, they have that. There's some that run in the cloud. There's some on-prem. There's some that allow you to do, you know, keep track of, I don't know why, I don't even want to get into this. But, you know, every every feature, unique, and you know what you need, and you can go to Capterra.com. You could select the category. You can narrow it down. They have filters that are specific to that kind of software. It's very smart software they have there. So, you know, if you're doing dog grooming software, you can say, you know, do you want to make appointments? Do you want this on the premises or do you want it in the cloud? All that stuff, you narrow it down to, you know, I want only five-star apps. You get, you can even compare them, make a side-by-side comparison chart, you know, like the magazines do, except it's your specific software so you can see side-by-side out. But this, this is when the best part happens because Captera has reviews by actual users. They're very carefully vetted. And, and they're fresh. There are a million plus reviews right now on Captera from real software users. That gives you the information you need to know, make an informed decision. You never have to say, well, let's try this. I don't know if it's any good. You can look at the reviews. And in fact, because Captera is free, oh, that's my left out the most important part, costs you absolutely nothing ever. 
I think people are more likely to leave reviews. It's a way to pay it forward. So find the software you need. Leave a review if you like it or if you don't. Say what's good and what's bad and help the next person. Visit Capterra.com slash Windows. You can do it for free. Get the tools you need to make an informed decision for your business. Capterra believes software makes the world a better place because software can help every organization become a better version of itself. Let's do it. What, what do you say? Stop putting up with that old stuff. Get something new at Capterra.com slash Windows. C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A. Capterra.com slash Windows. Capterra is software selection. Simplified. Now, Paul Therott, speaking of simple, with... I didn't do it. Oh, <laughs> what? His tip of the week, Paul. So, it's possible that this actually started with Windows 10 version 1903, which is a bit embarrassing because I install Windows approximately one million times a year and I never <laughs> saw this. But I started hearing with 1909 that there had been some changes with regards to your ability to configure a local account when you first set up Windows 10. Yeah, I thought you couldn't do it anymore. You can't. <laughs> well, so here's the deal. It's hard. So yeah, so if you have Windows 10 Pro, you're all set. It works just like it did before. It's fine. If you choose to use a local account, you get a new warning that makes it sound like you're doing something terrible. They call it a limited experience. Microsoft's really burnt that you're not connecting to a Microsoft account. This is for individuals, by the this way. Makes so this makes me is, crazy. Uh, Windows 10 Pro has an extra step where you say, I'm doing this, uh, setting this up for myself or for my business. You choose myself, and then you can create a local account or a uh, my, uh, an MSA account. Or uh, configure an MSA account. So, Paul, tell yes. me how you do it on Windows Home. Yeah, it's, it's, this one's <laughs> hilarious, Leo. You're going to like this. So, the problem with Windows 10 Home is they got rid of that step. So, if you get to the, th the part which says sign, into your, sign in with Microsoft, the little link down at the bottom that says offline account Go is on. not there anymore. I, drove, I saw that when I just set up my new yeah. machine. I was so... Like, so, here's the, the trick. What um, the <laughs> if you, you can... Yeah. yeah. You have to not connect to a network. You have setup. to disconnect from the free. No, 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 no. It's worse. You can't disconnect. What? You have to never connect. Oh God! If you, have you to start out unconnected to, completely. Oh yep, my God! If you, no, this, this is crazy. If you go through set, like let's say you got a new computer and it has Windows 10 Home on it. Yeah. And you go through the first couple of steps of um, setup. So you'll see the Cortana thing, right? Which is gone from Pro, thank God, but it's in Home. So you have to deal with her scatting away. You mute that. The first couple of steps, it was something. There's a couple of steps about a keyboard, a second keyboard, whatever the stuff is, and then it says connect to a network. Connect to a network, and if you mm. connect to a network, you can never fix it. Oh my God! Wow. Even if I survives, disconnect, I turn off it the Wi-Fi. reboots. Well, I should say, there is actually, if you know how to bring up a command line, you can you can issue some command line oh, Jesus. commands and actually turn off the network. But oh, if you Jesus. connect to that wireless network. And then you get to the part where you can't do a local account, and you're like, oh, it's okay. I'll turn off the computer and start it over again. Mm -hmm. It persists. It remembers. Like you, <laughs> it's crazy. So the, a couple of works, workarounds. I never, I didn't document the command line thing. I think it's a little esoteric. Um, you could try to use a phone number to create a new Microsoft account, enter an erroneous phone number several <laughs> times in a row. It will finally stop. You have to say, lie okay, to it. Stop. You have to you lie have to, to it. <laughs> the other workaround is you could say, well, screw it. I'll, I will do the Microsoft account, sign into Windows, then create a local account, make it an administrator, oh, sign into that, that account, okay. kill the MSA. You it's could do not that. that <clears throat> so you uh, wrote an article some time ago, which I've been following religiously ever since on how to set up right. Windows. And your excellent advice uh, was to up. make a local account first. With your name, like Leo, so that it yep. will be users Leo instead of yeah. users mm. Leo Laporte's mm -hmm. Microsoft. Yeah, so the, the, there's two primary issues there. Um, and one of, maybe it's possible Microsoft has resolved one of these, but the, the one that isn't resolved is let, let's say your user, your um, MSA is Therod at hotmail.com, right. which is an account I have. Right. The, the folder structure it will create is T H U R <laughs> as my mm -hmm. username. And it's like, you know, as the folder name, and it's like, like I, so I like to, I like it to say Paul. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I don't like know. mine to say Leo. Like, On yeah. every other operating um, system, it says Leo. Yeah, but that's not the big. That's not necessarily. The, maybe most people wouldn't that's care about minor. that. But that's because you're not supposed I, to. See I care it. about it. Yeah. But actually, the bigger issue is it associates the machine name 
with your, um, right. you know, up in OneDrive with your Microsoft account or up in the Microsoft account website. Um, the machine name is some garbage name at that point because mm-hmm. you don't get are never given the opportunity right. to rename it. I like to rename Me the too. machine, then sign into the I account. I go into control panel and do that. Yeah. Look, most people don't care, I guess. Yes. But if you care about this stuff, all I'm saying is don't connect to the network. Don't worry about the fear that Microsoft throws up the stuff. It makes it sound like you're doing something terrible. It's not terrible. It's fine. It's a little easier when you're first configuring a computer not to have to sign in or enter a pin every time you reboot because you're going to be doing a bunch of stuff. You're installing apps. You're rebooting. You're uh, installing Windows updates. You're rebooting. You're, you know, you're installing drivers. You're rebooting, whatever it is. But once it's kind of there, you can be like, all right, now I'm going to add the account. You know, That's how I do it. I know. I mean, maybe I overthink things. But they really made it hard in this version yeah. if you're a home user to do this. I know. And it's it, it kind of stinks because it's user remember we, hostile. Excuse me, it's user hostile. It's not. It's for and, Microsoft, not for you. But we just celebrated how they reverse themselves I on know. Windows updates yeah. and how you can de- you can delay them now in Home. And it's I like know. okay, they're not treating home users like second class citizens anymore. Except of course they are. Yeah. But with a different thing, you know. So. <sighs> Anyway, I so I wrote this article so people could understand it, and then I'm going to have to update the Windows 10 field guide because, of course, my all my yeah. information about how this works is completely wrong now because they just screwed, you know, changed whatever they changed. And they it just slipped it in, right? They didn't. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> it's just like mm, yeah. So guys. related to this, the Windows 10 1909 ISO is now available. So if you go to that uh, Windows 10 download site and you use the media creation tool which actually I think they just call the Windows 10 setup tool now, but whatever, and you download the ISO or you create the USB media, you will be getting 1909. So that just changed. I think that went live on Friday or Saturday. Um, I've used it. It works. You know, That's whatever. Good. Just That's good. spent half the weekend or print part of Monday reinstalling Windows over and over again to see... <laughs> You're so sad. That's so, that's so, <laughs> this is his that's life. My, so my life. I know. I know. You know the way I do it, actually. I use virtual machines, so I actually oh. make snapshots. So oh, I'll do things smart. like snapshot before you install networking. Yeah, you know, yeah. or well, you know, actually in a virtual machine, you can't do that. So I just turn off networking. And I just, anyway, I just you, look to see Would this system how, work in a virtual machine? Because isn't the virtual machine online instantly, automatically? I mean, yeah, but what you do is you turn off the network card when you install it, and then you turn it back on. <laughs> it's, so ridiculous. it's in the virtual machine settings. You can, you can, you turn can it. do that. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it's I guess it's not that big a deal. It's just Welcome to my stupid life. This is, <laughs> this is all I do. You know, so. uh, okay. okay. But anyway, just so you know, just mm-hmm. wanted people to know. Mm-hmm. This is arguably the most major change in Windows 10 version 1909. In fact, it's inarguable. <laughs> this is the biggest that, change. That tells you everything you need to know right there. <laughs> yep. It's crazy. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to mm. a happier topic. Happier topics. Uh, <laughs> my app pick of the week is uh, Adobe Photoshop Elements 2020. Um, this is interesting because I want to say three or four versions ago, they finally put Adobe Photoshop Elements in the store, the Microsoft store. This is a $100 application. They make a new version every year. The version I was using is called Photoshop Elements 15. It's not related to 2015, I don't think. Um but since then, they've gone to year names. So I want to say they went to, I'm not going to get this right. It doesn't matter. I, it, it, either version 18 or 2018, 2019. Now they have 2020, whatever. So I never upgraded this because why bother? For the stuff that I use, yeah. I can install this thing on every one of my computers. That's the beauty of the Microsoft Store. It works great. It doesn't have any missing features, whatever. But every year, you know, they come up with a new version. And every year for a little while, it's on sale for $60, which it is right now for the next couple of weeks, I think 10 days or so. And I look at it and I think, well, <clears throat> this is no big deal. But well, I, mean, I got to look at the list here because I, I brought this up. They, they had two things that I thought were really cool. So automatically um, colorized black and white photos, which is really cool. And the one that got me, I literally paid $60 for this feature, is one-click subject selection. So imagine you have a photo of your child at the beach, which is one of their examples. I didn't make this up. And there are kids in the background playing in the water. And you select the kids, one-click each, and it just... Poof, gets rid of them in the photo. And the reason I want this is not for my personal photos because who cares? It's because I make those funny graphics for sure it takes every Friday. And when I want to make a picture of Sachin and Adela dunking it on the Golden State Warriors, <laughs> it's way easier to select his head, put it in. There it is. Yep. 
So that's you'll you'll all benefit <laughs> from this. Everyone purchase. will win. We, it's, we <laughs> all win, baby. Yeah, I like I I actually really like Photoshop Elements. I always have. Um, like I don't buy one every year. Why what, why would I? But um, and it's not that different. So I mean, that's your day. primary illust not paint. Not that's your primary. No, illustration. I use paint. I use oh, paint okay. and Photoshop Elements. Those are my two things. Cool. I use paint. I, it's possible I use paint more than anything. <clears throat> Photoshop elements for me mostly day to day, like when I make graphics, is about cropping because it retains the cropping. So right. it's 16 by 9 and then resizing and then outputting to JPEG. It's obscurely disturbing to me that our two most expert Windows users, mm -hmm. Paul uses paint and Mary Jo uses no. <laughs> yeah. It, well, right. <laughs> notepad. It's just, it's just a slightly disturbing. You know, right. if it ain't broke. It's <laughs> a good point. Actually, it's even better than I would say. I don't know. Notepad, I'm not so sure. I, in fact, I wouldn't. I should do this. I got to go back and look at Notepad. All right, you're writing your own Notepad. <laughs> well, no, that's why I want to do this because I, I actually feel like Notepad has added a bunch of stuff that is kind of superfluous, uh, and I'm nervous they about it. I think they're going to yeah. keep going. Yeah. I'd be interested to see what Notepad looked like in Vista. I bet that one was perfect. But mm. like Paint has pretty much just kind of sat there. And it literally is perfect. Like, I, I yeah. don't want them to ever change this. Yeah. I'm not too mad about what they're doing in Notepad because they're adding things developers want. And I can't begrudge that. That's I can't. Who uses they should have Notepad. a separate editor for developers, you know, like Visual Studio Code. Yeah. <laughs> right. Notepad Code, Notepad Regular, <laughs> Notepad Light. Yeah, Notepad and uh, Paint are both pinned to my taskbar. Yeah, wow. same. I have, yep. yeah, not Paint, but Notepad. Yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, let's do a, a Mary Jo Foley Enterprise Pick of the Week. My Enterprise Pick is a product called Azure Front Door. Shut Azure the front, front door. door. Exactly. <laughs> and they did the yesterday. You will hear what, why I made this the pick. <laughs> Azure Front Door is supposed to be a service that lets people define, manage, monitor global routing for web traffic and provide instant global failover for high availability. Guess what went down last night at 7 p.m. <laughs> Eastern time? <laughs> oh, no. As your front door. Yeah, I'm sitting there having dinner, and all of a sudden I'm, like, glanced at Twitter, which you should never do, and I'm everyone's yep. shouting out to me, Mary Jo, Azure's down, Office 365 is down. It's a huge outage. Like, it's major. And I'm like, oh, maybe it'll just fix itself in a couple hours or something, and I can ignore it. Well, it was down four hours. And um, the reason it was down was Azure front door. Uh, Azure Front Door went down, basically. And Microsoft said this issue impacted a large percentage of Microsoft services, no, though not all of them. Uh, it sounded from people who are tweeting to me like it was everything. They couldn't even see the dashboards telling them the status of Azure or Office 365 because that was down too. So my guidance and the reason I'm making this a pick is if you don't already watch these two Twitter accounts, you should because this is the way I keep up and this is the way you can keep up as well with what's happening when you can't see your dashboard. One of them is called at MSFT365 status. The other one is at Azure support. If you follow those two things, you would have been watching last night as this cascaded and then they fixed it about four hours later. Wow. Yeah. Okay. The rule is do not look at Twitter while you're about to have dinner. <laughs> I think that's, that's a good, the real lesson here. That's a really good rule. <laughs> uh, yeah. Code name of the week. Yeah, so I made this a code name recently. I think while you were on your trip, Leo, Project Turing. Ah. I saw that Microsoft was going to talk about this at Ignite. And there were a lot of good hints in their session description about what this was. But now that we've had time since Ignite is over, to go back and watch sessions and try to piece things together. Now I know what this is. Mm. So Project Turing is the thing that Microsoft also calls Microsoft Search, uh, sorry, Microsoft Semantic Search. So there's this thing that exists today called Microsoft Search. It's the unified search service that Microsoft is bringing to Edge, the new Edge, Windows 10, Office, and Office 365, and Bing. This is called Microsoft Search. At Ignite, they showed off in a couple sessions the semantic search capability. What this is, is a way to do search much more naturally and smarter. So it's basically natural language queries being introduced into search. 
You know, like sometimes when you search for something and you get a ton of irrelevant results or you just get a bunch of links and you're like, no, that's not nothing at all what I wanted. This is going to help detect intent of your search. And I know it sounds like pie in the sky, but at Ignite, they actually announced that it is in private preview right now. And if you're an organization, you can apply to be in the private preview. It's going to be in public preview early 2020, so in a few more months. And it's going to ship next year, they say. By the end of 2020, Semantic Search will be built into Microsoft Search. Semantic Search is codenamed Project Turing. And right now, Project Turing mm -hmm. is part of Bing, uh, but it's going to be extended out into these other pieces of unified search over time. Mystery solved, Project Turing, Semantic Search. Yep. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> beer time. Yes. Yes. The beer pick is today is called Offshoot Beers Pause, P-A-W-Z. Best, um, best, <laughs> best label ever or whatever. You it is. It. The label's so cute, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah I love so it. Th there's a great brewery in Southern California <laughs> called The Brewery. <laughs> B R U E R Y. So brewery, the brewery is known for making sours and barrel aged beers. Now the brewery has created a, an, an offshoot, quote unquote, called Offshoot Beer, and they're making IPAs. And oh, this yay. one, <laughs> I know, yay! Another, <laughs> but you know why, why this is interesting? This? <laughs> this, no, the reason this is interesting is because the brewery makes some of the best craft beer that exists, and so the fact that they're now making IPAs gives people who love IPAs. Yet another great place to go to try really delicious beers. And this one has all kinds of great hops, Mosaic, Equinox, Galaxy, and one I don't know called Ariana. And the best thing about this beer, if there could even be something better, is it's a benefit for the Orange County Society oh. for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Oh, everybody should drink more. They should. They should. Nice. It's called Paws. It's in cans. It's on draft in various places. P A W Z. It's worth a try. Aww. Double She's IPA. Paws. Like, aw. Aw. Aw, Paws. It's Oz. Aw. Nice. Aww. It's got pictures of doggies on it. So it's, it's a bunch of pictures of animals my dog would hate. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. It's just it loves people, really not happy about other dogs. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a dog. I miss my dog. Oh, do you? I could give you a dog. <laughs> just to say the word. <laughs> uh, yeah, just have him hitchhike out here. We'll be glad. Yep. Yeah. What kind of dog do you have? Oh, God, it's um, half a Labradoodle and half of an insane rabid wolf thing. I don't know. It's like... <laughs> you know, the, uh, the breeder who created... I want to say the Labradoodle, but I think it was the Cockapoo. Mm -hmm. Some weird breed says no one should ever... <laughs> Yeah. Ever, ever get this dog or make any more. Well, I think that yeah, we've created these weird monsters. Yeah. Like, um, I think my dog mentally is like the creature from the John yeah. Carpenter thing movie, but it's like, um, it might be the it Labradoodle. Lo guy. Loves people. Yeah. But hates dogs. But is literally a homicidal maniac when it comes to other animals. Yeah. I like to thank you for sharing that. I like to hear those stories. It makes me not want a dog after all. Yeah. <laughs> I just I'd like to serve as a warning to others. Cats. You've got you the know. cameras. You've got the camera all set up. Yeah, so, cats you know. do crazy things, but the thing is they're small. Yeah. And, they can know, be punted. Right. They Even, can still be pretty destructive. Oh, Take yeah. Take it from one or no. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, the, dog is, the dog mauled my face with its hands. It's a dangerous <laughs> animal. Okay. I'm No animals in the house. I've, I'm new rule. Yep. <laughs> it's just <laughs> the same. New rule. Yeah. <laughs> Mary Jo Foley has a cat named Sirachi. I do. He's still alive. Name... <laughs> <laughs> and that's the best she can say about that, it. That's what I say about my dog. Still alive, huh? She's also a very, very hardworking contributor to allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's where you'll find her notes on what's going on. She's got the best sources at Microsoft. Uh, Paul Therott, of course, writes at therott.com. Become a premium member because there's great premium content there. You should also uh, look for his books at leanpub.com, including... The soon-to-be-updated Windows 10 yep. field guide. <laughs> yep. With all new screenshots. <clears throat> I didn't think I'd be updating any chapters <sighs> as thoroughly as this one will have to be updated, but there it is. Yep. All the joys of writing a book. <laughs> Each week, they convene right here on Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, that would be 
1800 UTC. If you want to watch us uh, do the show live, twit.tv slash live. You can also chat live as we do the show at irc.twit.tv. After the fact, you can download any show, audio or video, from our website, twit.tv. In the case of Windows Weekly, it's twit.tv slash ww. And uh, you'll find them all there, all lined up for you. If you are listening asynchronously, we also have a place you can join the community. We mentioned it earlier, www.twit.community. It's our forum. It's great. It's going so well. Uh, and there's a lot of great stuff in there. I actually spent a lot of time uh, on vacation in there because asynchronous is a little easier sometimes. Uh, mm -hmm. If you really care about the show, the best thing you could do to support it is, subs besides supporting our sponsors, which I know you do already, is subscribe. That way you'll get a copy of it the minute it's available automatically on your device. But it also sends a signal to those podcatchers, hey, this is a good show. You should, uh, you should highlight it once in a while. You should let people know about it. <laughs> <laughs> that really does help us. Um, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. We'll you. see you next week. I'll be here. Welcome back. Well, no, maybe yeah. I won't. I don't know. I might go. Wait, you're back. not coming? <laughs> you're like, no, I'll be I was here. off for a month. I thought, <laughs> I'll, I'll be here. Sure. No, you know, Micah did such good. a good job. <laughs> Actually, it's really nice to have Micah and Aunt and Jason because they do such a good yeah. job filling in that I, yeah. honestly, I'd, I probably could take another vacation, but I, I won't <laughs> because I don't want them to forget. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. <laughs>